everyone. Welcome to the celebration, the return, and a night filled with anniversaries. Tonight in Orlando, Florida, we celebrate an amazing 13 years as you see the man who earlier today arrived, who will be competing in the returning King of the Mountain match at Slammiversary. Looks like he's a perfect fit style-wise for his first ever King of the Mountain matchup. And yes, hell froze over this past Wednesday when Jeff Jarrett returned to TNA on Impact Wrestling tonight. Jarrett back at the site of some of his biggest victories here in Orlando, Florida. Tonight, a very special evening. It's an evening that revolves around history and history on so many fronts. For 13 years. Wrestling's biggest names have made an impact. I don't believe it! Kurt Angle's coming to TNA! No! God! Freaking way! Oh, God! It's real. It's damn real. Historic moments that will stand the test of time. The game changes now. 13 years of unforgettable memories. Oh, my God! It's Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle! forging an enduring legacy. You have witnessed an electric finish to an electric night where Sting has become the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And tonight, the tradition continues. This isn't just an evolution, it's a revolution. These people are willing to stand up. We have a movement, and in the end, we're gonna win. Some will be victorious while others will live to fight another day. But all who step into the six-sided ring tonight will be a part of history. I am officially declaring myself the next TNA World Heavyweight Champion. TNA Wrestling presents Slap Anniversary. On what has been an unprecedented year, tonight we celebrate the culmination of 13 years, we celebrate the return of the King of the Mountain. And it all goes down live exclusively on pay-per-view. Welcome, everyone, to Slammiversary 2015. Josh Matthews ringside with the Pope and the man who has been here since day one, the legendary professor, Mike Today. Josh, thank you very much. It's a great evening here in Orlando, Florida, Slammiversary. And Pope, those gentlemen that we saw arrive earlier competing in the King of the Mountain match. Hey, Dad, it's going to be a big night here at TNA. Pope's looking his best. Today's dressed to impress. And Josh, well, you're Josh. But let's get down, Daddy. Those gentlemen will be competing for the King of the Mountain Championship. And speaking of championships, I say we get this night started with an X Division Championship match here at Slammiversary 2015. Yeah, let's do it. The following contest is an elimination match for the X Division Championship. Introducing first from a visa, DJ Z. DJ Z is a former X Division champion. He's also a man kind of guys without a home after the bromance imploded. Robbie and Jesse, they'll go one on one later. They're no more, but where does that leave DJ Z? Time to focus on his singles career. You talked about that championship reign three months back in 2012. Gonna try and get the title back tonight. And his opponent representing the revolution, Man. Also a former X Division champion, Manic is quick. Agile Pope, he sort of reminds me of you. He's tough to slow down. Well, that's the thing about when it comes to Manic. The guy has style, he has agility, he has ability, and maybe that ability will catapult him to the X Division title yet again. Manic last held the X Division title in 2013, winning it in an Ultimate X match. And like DJ Z, he looks to regain the gold tonight. 
and their opponent from Tijuana, Mexico, your ex division champion, Tigre Uno. Don't blink, or you might miss something spectacular from the brand new X Division champion. He won it this past Wednesday night live on Impact Wrestling. The Masked Marvel, guys, he's certainly compelling, but considering who trained him, Mike, I don't think that's tough to say. Trained by Rey Mysterio Sr., the uncle of Rey Mysterio. Tigre Uno from Tijuana, Mexico, and yes, when he won the championship Wednesday night, called it the greatest night of his life. A fast and furious start to Slammiversary 2015. We are live in the United States, Canada, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, India, and France, thanks to our television partners and through the Flips TV app. This is an elimination style matchup. So we'll see who will uh, sort of partner up here because it behooves you guys to sort of team up with somebody, eliminate another member of this match. Yeah, at least initially that's the case. And Whoop. I just love the idea that we kick off Slammiversary with an X Division Championship match. You consider how important the X Division has been to TNA's identity throughout the past 13 years. This is a nice tribute in my opinion. It's part of the foundation of TNA. X Division put TNA on the map, and you're right, Mr. TNA, it is great to start it off this way. Is there, guys, in your opinions, a better representative of the X Division than our current champion, Tigre Uno? I think style-wise, he is X Division, right? Well, hell, Uno definitely has the right to call himself Uno because he's number one in the X Division. Well, his name's Tigre Uno. I believe that's more of his name, the Tigre part. Well, I think Uno is what matters right now. I like what one. the Pope said. That Appreciate makes it. sense to me. Mike, welcome to the, the new broadcast team. <laughs> this is Manic in the ring here with Tigre Uno. Manic goes Spider-Man-esque and hangs onto the ropes, but didn't expect EJC to be on the outside. I think it's great to have someone, a professor, kill him. How about the recovery? by DJZ quickly coming up from the floor, stopping the offensive attack of Tigre Uno, but then Manic able to pull DJZ down to the floor. Oh, keep your eyes on the man in the ring. Here comes the champ. Tigre Uno goes up and over corkscrew style and takes out everybody. What a move by Tigre Uno. One more look at the speed of Tigre Uno flying through the air, Pope. Amazing agility shown by the champion with a corkscrew plunger over the top rope. And Tigre Uno not done yet. DJZ plays defense and puts a stop to the current and reigning X Division champion. Tigre Uno defeated Loki and Grado this past Wednesday night live on Destination America. We're in the middle, guys, of an outstanding week. We were live this past Wednesday, of course, Slammiversary tonight, and then this upcoming Wednesday, it's bell to bell on Destination America. It's an amazing hot period right now at TNA. The action is amazing. The competitors are amazing. And right now, Manic is trying to prove how amazing he is as he applied a backbreaker to Uno. And Manic into the first cover of the match. Tigre Uno pops three at two. So guys, now that I have you both here, predictions here in this X Division Championship match. Does Tigre retain or do we see a new champion? Well, I just see the momentum on the side of Tigre Uno. Confidence level rising after winning the championship this past Wednesday night on Impact Wrestling. Got to stick with the champ and the champion's advantage. Well, right now, Josh, I'm going to revisit what you said earlier during the start of this matchup. Pope's surprised that there hasn't been a, an alliance made, if you will, some sort of union. Oh! Four between the two as we see the drop kick by Manic, a union of sorts to take out the stronger league. Not the weakest, but the strongest. Manic, another cover hooks the outside leg. And I got to ask the question, how good do you think Manic could be if he weren't corrupted by James Storm and the revolution and listening to the leadership of Storm? Well, I think at that point, then his concentration, his focus would be on singles competition exclusively. So you'd have to think if he were to break away from the revolution that his stock would rise. Well, uh, Pope's going to beg the different professor. Please do. I know you're the professor, but I'm the Pope, and I see it like this. Whatever it takes to get to the top, that's been tested, tried, and, and true throughout the history of professional wrestling. And if Manic sees that as catapulting him to the top, then more power to him. So, Pope, you believe that 
wrestlers on Impact Wrestling should take shortcuts. DJZ wow. flies into the ring, was looking for the DDT, got caught by oh, Manic. What an amazing maneuver by Manic, the knee to the face. Zima has to be seeing stars, Josh. DJZ right out here in front of us as we are live exclusively on pay-per-view. Elimination style, X Division Championship matchup. Two men in the ring as we see Manic go for the cover here and get a two count. Tigre, Uno, and Manic, they competed last year at Slammiversary in the same match, a ladder match for the X Division Championship that was won by Sonata. Let's we'll see who has the luck tonight. Who will leave as X Division Champion Tigre, Uno, in his first title defense. It's two of the top X Division wrestlers on our roster. Manic holds on, turns inside, looking back, suplex and Tigre even a planet in the center of the six-sided ring. Nice standing suplex to a back suplex, shades of Elijah Burke. Good job by Manic. Elijah Burke, who? <laughs> <laughs> DJZ, that's a unique way to get back into the ring, ducks the clothesline off the other side, and DJZ, nice chuck kick there to Manic. That was, uh, D'Angelo De Niro-esque. Absolutely. But look Ooh. at this back elbow springboard by DJZ. DJZ ducks the clothesline. He's out of the bromance. Mentioned earlier that he's sort of a man without a home, but DJZ can create something special here, guys, if he wins this match. This action is unbelievable. How do you keep up with it? This is what the X Division is all about. Mike, you've been saying it since day one. It's not about limits. Yeah, it's no limits. It's unlimited. Turn them loose like oh. we do here. Rocket kick to the back of the head by the champion, Tigre Uno. Not sure if Manic got all of that drop kick there. Oh. DJZ running pair of knees right into Manic. You gotta keep your head on a swivel in a match like this. Yeah, especially in this three-way, like you say, the two challengers for the champion, Tigre Uno. That edge that he would normally have going into a matchup sort of taken away by the fact that you have to worry about two men competing for the gold. Professor, what are we in store for later tonight? This is sort of like a precursor to when there'll be five men competing in the return of the King of the Mountain match. Yeah, I've been waiting for years for King of the Mountain to return. So appropriate that it's here tonight at Slammiversary. And yes, the Ooh. return, the shocking surprise of Jeff Jarrett later tonight. OMG, the last time Pope saw action this fast, I had to press up, down, up, down, AB, AB, left, right, left, right. And here comes like this. DJZ takes out Tigre Uno. And a move by DJZ. One more look at this athleticism up and over the top rope. DJZ, as Professor Sanders just said, this isn't about limits. It's no limits. And DJZ just personified that. Slammiversary is trending worldwide via Twitter right now. We invite all of you to engage with us via social media tonight. Follow along via Twitter at Impact Wrestling. And of course, follow TNA President Dixie Carter at TNA Dixie as she continues to bring all the exclusives via her Twitter account. No one has been eliminated yet. We're about, what, 10, 12 minutes in, and we've yet to see an elimination. Pope loves what Manic just done as uh, DJ Z here just stopped the champ in his tracks. But why not go for the mask? Turn it around, blind the champ. That gives you an advantage. DJZ had Tigre Uno, Manic had DJZ, Jackknife cover, and DJZ has not been eliminated. Sure felt, sure looked like that was going to be elimination one in this three-way match. What's it gonna take to eliminate one of these guys? An electric chair, also with a sliced bread from the top. And DJZ just sure that Manic wasn't going to be able to connect on Tigre Uno, who's on the canvas. What is going on now? Top rope Huracan oh Rana goodness. into the cover, and the champion's going to be eliminated. Tigre kicks out of two. Boy, I like DJZ's strategy right there, where he takes Manic away from the champion, comes right down into the pinning oh. attempt on the title holder, and there's the drop kick that sends Manic out to the floor. It's almost like there's nine or 10 guys in this match. The action is non-stop as Tigre Uno 
was able to take care of DJC there, and Tate Rayuno running drop kick in the corner. That'll send you to the orthodontics, right in the mush maker. And Tigre Uno! DJC will be eliminated first in this DJC matchup. DJC has been eliminated. So now we're down to two guys. It becomes a one-on-one -on -one match. I almost said the word traditional, but there's nothing traditional <laughs> about the X Division. Yeah, hardly. Outside in with the shoulder block by Manic, who goes springboard, does not connect. And this was how T. Gray Uno was able to defeat DJC. Coming off the top, and he got the three count with the maneuver. That is hard to describe, but it was effective. Ooh, how about the way that he sprung split leg it off the top cover, right into the cover, pin. Cover, cover, on Manic, and Manic gets the inside shoulder up at two. First match of Slammiversary 2015. You know, the action is picking up, and as, as we notice, uh, DJ Z just went back to the back. And I'm just wondering why DJ Z and Manic didn't Ooh. team up. Why they didn't try to take out the champion? That would have made more sense. Took the bell away from him. Well, that's what you guys were talking about in the early goings of this matchup. Sort of turn it into a one-on-one -on -one match, but either way you slice it, Pope, it was going to come down to two guys. Absolutely, but eliminate the champion, guarantee a new champion. Frost the champion. by Manic didn't get it all. Tigre Uno holds on, rolls through, and Tigre Uno was that close. I think Tigre also got his knees up just at Absolutely. the last second, made contact with Manic, quickly turned it into a pin attempt, but couldn't put him away. That's why I like having the professor with us, Pope. He notices the nuances of what goes on in the ring. When That's I'm why you like every Wednesday with you. It's like I'm out here by myself. That's why you like having him. Pope's <laughs> loving him. Manic slips free. And Manic, what a move there. Had that double underhook. And then the knees right to the chest of Tigre Uno. And Manic this time connects with the Frog Splash. New X Division champion Tigre Uno says not so fast. You got to know Manic has been all over the world, wrestled all in Mexico, Japan, and you got to know that the shades of Eddie Guerrero just showed through of how much he was influenced by that frog splash. Great call there, Pope. And you can see Manic now. He's got the championship in his sights. He's going to try to put away T. Grayuno. Body scissors roll through. T. Grayuno opts not to go for the cover. Looks for a German suplex into the turnbuckle. He's going for the kill. He's going for it. And Tigre got the legs across the chest of Manic, but I think it's going to be enough for Tigre Uno to retain his title. Your winner and still exhibition champion, Tigre Uno. What a win. What a start to Slammiversary 2015. Could have gone either way, guys. Oh, gone super, way. super competitive matchup. But in the end, yes, it was the champion, T. Ray Uno, who was able to string together the series of offensive moves sufficiently to put away Manic. And yes, he is still the champion. Josh, time to take another look. Fast and furious action from the start. That was T. Ray Uno, the champion, throwing caution to the wind. DJC would not be out during this matchup. Neither would Manic. It appeared as if anyone was going to be able to pick up the victory in this matchup. The first ball came right there, folks. Absolutely. He hit that amazing split leg, moonsault maneuver, corkscrew with it. And once again, he did it on Manic, and it paid off. Congratulations to the champion. He earned the win, eliminating both men. So what's next for T. Gray Uno as the X Division champion? in Impact Wrestling. Mike, today you've been here since day one. So has our broadcast colleague. He's standing by backstage, J.B. Jeremy Borash. We're off and running here at Slammiversary, a celebration, an incredible 13 years. And tonight we celebrate it in style. On a personal note, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every fan, each and every business partner, every associate from France, to the United Kingdom, to Australia, across North America, it has been an incredible, incredible ride. And certainly, as we look back, I've been here at every show, every pay-per-view, every impact, and I can tell you, it has been an incredible experience to work with some of the most incredible athletes in the world. Now, speaking of personal, this is very personal. Robbie E., set tonight to do battle against Jesse Goddard's 
Certainly a historic tag team, now bitter enemies here at Impact Wrestling. Boom! People have known me here for over five years. They've known Robbie E to be crazy. They've known Robbie E to be wild. They've known Robbie E to do a chicken dance. Caca! 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 <clears throat> but tonight, tonight that Robbie E is out the door. Tonight, JB, that Robbie E is gone. Because my tag partner, my former tag partner, my former best friend, Jesse Godders, he put a chair on my throat, ran me into a post, and tried to take away the one thing that I love. Pro wrestling. Jesse, you're not the man. These people don't think you're the man. You are what you've always been and what they know you've always been. My bitch.
Robbie E wants to call me a bitch. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> guys, guys, look at me. Look at the man that I am. I was stuck with Robbie, the bro, the boy. Here's something you might care about, because like you people, you fat, triple digit, just heart attack waiting people, just like Robbie, have no idea the work it takes to be a man. You can't sit behind a keyboard and drink coffee and look like this. You can't become a huge reality TV star by bitching and complaining. Robbie, I did you a favor by letting you hang out with me. And then you copied me. And then I put you on a commission for a month. And his opponent from Odell, New Jersey, Robbie E. Never thought I'd be so happy to see Robbie E, and here we go. Speak for yourself, Josh. But I am liking the aggression. I'm loving what I'm seeing right now for Robbie E. Robbie E's a hustler, a hard worker. There's not a weekend where Robbie E is sitting at home. Robbie E's always wrestling. He's always on the road somewhere doing an independent shot. This guy just wants to get better and better. Yeah, I talked to both Jesse and Robbie about the different mindsets after spending so much time as a tag team. Both admitted to me they're enjoying the challenge of transitioning into singles competition, but this is absolutely about the bad blood between these two. And really, this is a pivotal match for both Robbie E and Jesse. The winner will always get to say to his former tag team partner, I beat you. I was better than you at Slammiversary. Absolutely, and I think that's what each competitor right now is looking oh. for. Robbie's looking for revenge. The modern day Adonis looking for bragging rights. And now Robbie flies into the cover, hooks the leg, and Jesse kicks out at one. Robbie E not only wants to prove to Jesse, but everyone watching that he is a wrestler. Robbie E wants to be known as an all around great wrestler, and I give credit to Robbie E for wanting that. This is two guys that are so familiar with each other. Pope, I've got to ask you, what is that dynamic like when you're facing a former partner that knows you so well? I want you to address that after this replay. Absolutely. You can see right there, Robbie E sent Jesse over the top rope and then followed it by his own springboard sort of planche, if that's what you want to call it. But it was a fun. Come on, Jesse. Come on, so, Pope, back to Mike's question. What's that like when you have that dynamic, Ooh. being a tag team for so long, and you know each other so well? You know the offense, oh. like the back of your hand, but now you've got to, do you change things up, or do you stick with the game plan? Well, you know, that's the, that's the tricky part about being in the tag teams. I mean, you had great tag teams throughout the history. You had the beer monies. You had people like- Oh, man! The Hart Foundation and the Rockers, right now, 
I think that Jesse is trying to say, hey, I'm going to be that Bobby Roode. I'm going to be the one that goes on to become a multiple-time world champion, if not the longest reigning world champion of the team. But to do so, he has to come up with new maneuvers. He has to do things a little bit differently to outsmart the person who he was formerly married to. Yeah, that's always the question, whether you do change up the offense against your former tag team partner, or do you play to your own strengths with your normal offense. And I hope that James Storm isn't paying attention to what you just said there, Pope, because James Storm is going on to have an incredible singles career as well. Never said that James did, but it's evident that Bobby Roode is the longest reigning champion in TNA's history. That is what can, Robbie E can go on to be a champion as well. But it doesn't mean that he's going to reach a certain status that Mr. Spectacular, the modern day status, as he brings down the floors across the chest, is trying to get to. Former two time tag team champions, but Robbie E, his own resume lists a former X Division champion. So Robbie has gotten it done in his single career. Well, yeah. you're right, no question. And also, a TV champion. For that X Division Championship. Covered here by Jesse Rob Goddard. Robbie E, he beat Jay Lethal for the X Division title, and then, yes, also held the TV title. So I think, in terms of singles competition experience, you've got to give the edge and the nod oh, to Jesse. Robbie E. Jesse trying to hang on here. Nice trying to count. take advantage of his strength. And yeah, Robbie E was trying to disbalance his weight, it looked like, Pope. Absolutely. It was a nice counter, just kicking the legs to try to change the shift of the weight, if you will, to put him back to the mat. He was successful for a moment there, Josh. And we'll see if Jesse can get a tighter grip here on the waist of Robbie. Now, Josh, let's just revisit what you said when we're talking about James Storm, when we're I talking knew, about I Bobby Roode. want to go back of there. Of course, you want to be friends with it. everybody in the back. It's not about being friends. You want to upset anybody, so go ahead. I use those guys as examples because they are the best of the best here in TNA. They are the best tag team, one of the best tag teams, to come through TNA. And you know what? You got to give credit where it's due, man. You've never Ooh. been... You've never been in the ring like these guys, so understand this. When it comes to wrestling, when it comes to holding championship, it's all fine to be a tag champion, great to be X Division champion, but everybody wants to be the world champion, so you can call yourself Governor by Jesse Gatters. The man. I don't think there's any question about that, but I think I have to side with Josh at this point. Professor Trent Lightly, Danny. <laughs> um, I'm glad that you were able to uh, make amends there, Pope. And, track. And, and you said that oh nice jump kick there. You said that Jesse needs to do all these things. You said that Jesse needs to prove himself to be the man. He's already calling himself the man. No 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 no. Once you well, you know what Josh, Pope's not going to continue with that. Let's just let's just say this. He comes out as the man. He has it on his back, but he doesn't have that stamp. He doesn't have the gold around his waist. I mean, you call yourself a uh, play-by-play analyst. But thankfully, the professor Mike Tanae's here. Uh, I, I don't call myself a play-by-play -play analyst. <laughs> no, you Thank just, you for the yeah, softball. I'm a play-by-play yeah. -play announcer. Yeah, yeah, that too. I'm gonna have a pull apart out here at the broadcast table. Oh man, nice uh, bear hug here by Jesse. We've already seen Tigre Uno retain the X Division Championship in the first match here at Slammiversary 2015. We'll see the return of the King of the Mountain match as Jesse off the backbreaker, the cover doesn't hook the leg, and Robbie kicks out at two. Mike, I cannot wait to hear some of the facts that you have as it relates to King of the Mountain. We haven't seen it since, I believe, 2009, is that correct? That is right, we're gonna go through all the details once we get to King of the Mountain, and there's so much intrigue this year with the return of King of the Mountain after hell froze over this past Wednesday night. Absolutely, how great is that gonna be as we see the Bear hug applied yet again, which I think is very smart by Jesse. You target a part of the body, you know you got the guy hurt, you continue to go back to the game plan. Don't stray away from it unless your opponent forces you to. And right now, that hasn't happened. Robbie's starting to fade here from the bear hug of Jesse. If that hand drops one more time, Jesse will be victorious. Look at the intensity on Jesse's face. And Robbie hangs on. So the match continues. Mike mentioned hell freezing over Wednesday. That was the return of the founder of Global Force Wrestling, Jeff Jarrett and Karen Jarrett. They came out, they shocked the world, they changed the game. And Jeff will be competing later tonight 
in the returning King of the Mountain match. But right now it's Whoa. Bromance, former Bromance, going one-on-one. -on -one. What a cross body there. The explosive move out of the corner by Robbie E. Almost at that point, realizing that he needed to get some kind of offense after being in the bear hug it of was, Jesse Goddard. It was definitely a desperation move there by Robbie E. But let's see if he can capitalize on it, Professor. How much wind was taken away from Robbie, though? And that vicious bear hug, that tight grip by Jesse. This will be very telling to see who fades first between these former tag team champions. And right now, Pope is getting, getting some bubbles, if you will, because I'm surprised. Ooh, I'm impressed by the fortitude of one Robbie E. Nice DDT. DDT. Mike, did you expect to see this? Hold that thumb. Covered out. by Robbie to kick out of two. Did I expect to see the intensity that we're seeing from these two guys? Hell yes, I did, especially after the three matches that we called on Impact Wrestling. But it was that post-match attack by Jesse Goddard on Robbie E that showed me that these two guys were really going to turn it up here tonight at Slammiversary. Short arm reversal there by Jesse in a completely packed house to the rafters here at Universal in Orlando, Florida. For Slammiversary 2015, Jesse's trying to connect here with a power bomb. Robbie trying oh. to hang on, and a turnbuckle power bomb from Jesse to Robbie. Aggression, Josh. Aggression. That is going to be the difference maker. That is what can take the modern day Adonis to a new level. It already has. Jesse in hot pursuit. High back elbow there by Robbie E. Pair of clotheslines and both men down. Well, we talked about the, the fact that they know each other so well. Both men going for the same move at the same time, both connecting with the clotheslines. These guys traveled the road together. They were like brothers for nearly two years as the bromance. If you saw Jesse, you saw Robbie. They were always together. Sure they trained indeed. together. Sure indeed, Josh. Somebody got tired of the bromance, though. Like Mike said, they know each other inside and out. What an, what an incredible match. What an incredible match by both of these performers, just giving it their all right now. I mean, how well do you know your tag team partner when you stand on the apron every night and you watch him compete inside the ring? You know what he's going to do? It's like watching him under a microscope. Yeah, it's, it's me and you, Josh, we're partners, and we've been traveling together now, and I still don't really know you, though. Really? No. Oh, yeah. We got a bromance thing, too. <laughs> it's news to me here at Slammiversary. <laughs> Hashtag Josh and Pope trending worldwide via Twitter. Jesse looking for another power bomb and it connects. Robbie's down. Jesse may have done enough to put away. And in this rivalry, Robbie says not so fast. A look of shock and awe in the face of Jesse Goddard after that tremendous power bomb. He's going for the Adonis lock. He's going for it, Josh. He got it locked in. How long will Robbie E be able to hold on to keep from tapping out to the Adonis lock by the modern day Adonis Jesse Goddard? All about trying to exploit the power, the strength advantage that he has over Robbie E. Jesse trying to get the submission, the tap out win, but the safety of the ropes gives Robbie E. a break. Well, you know, I don't think it's just about a sport, uh, Mr. Tanay. It's also the fact that, as evident by the bear hugs, the multiple bear hugs that Jesse put on Robbie earlier, he was targeting the back. He was weakening it so that he can apply the Adonis lock. And I think right there, he felt the time was right. But Robbie had enough to make it to the rope, Josh. And imagine the bragging rights if Jesse is able to get Robbie to say, I quit, I tap out, I can't take any more from you in this one-on-one -on -one match. Nice counter, reverse DDT, hooks the inside leg, Jesse down, and Robbie picks up the win! Robbie is victorious! Your winner, Robbie! Robbie E is the better brewman! No, Robbie E is the better man here tonight at Slammiversary. Get that robe that Jesse Goddard wears and put it on Robbie E. Oh, slow your road, Josh. Let's not go that far.
Congratulations to Robbie Edo. He didn't pull out the victory in a hard-fought match between himself and his former pro man. I don't know, Mr. Tanay, do you think this is over? I tell you what, I agree with you on one thing. He pulled out the win. It sure looked like the man, Jesse Goddard, was in control of this match. And we're going to go back and we're going to revisit what went down. I thought that the power about Mike was going to be the ending. I thought it was going to be the victory for Jesse. Somehow, Robbie persevered. Counter victory, Robbie E. Bragging rights for Robbie E. after Slammiversary. Congratulations, Robbie E. We got plenty more to come here tonight on Slammiversary. The hits will keep on coming as we send it back to Jeremy Borash. Anniversary and what a return it was this last Wednesday when Matt Hardy had a chance to step in the ring with the World Heavyweight Champion. Certainly an incredible night tonight here as well. A huge opportunity in the King of the Mountain match. It's exciting to be back. First and foremost, Matt Hardy will always be remembered as one of the greatest tag team wrestlers to ever step foot inside the ring. But on nights like tonight, I get the opportunity to be remembered as one of the greatest singles wrestler to ever step foot inside a wrestling ring. Tonight, I get the opportunity to add the King of the Mount Championship title to my resume, and that's important to me. It's important that I cement my legacy as one of the greatest of all times, but it's not gonna be easy because I have to go through four bad dudes. Drew Galloway, Eric Young, Bobby Roode, and Jeff Jarrett. Jeff, it was good to see you back for one last hurrah, but tonight, OV1, the man who is stronger than death, the man who never says die, is gonna add a new nickname to his collection and that's gonna be the king of the mountain. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Kingsland, England, Bram! He's the Chesterfield flag. He's the most dangerous man on the Impact roster. It was this past Wednesday night live on Impact Wrestling that Bram would face Vader, yes, Vader, and if you thought that return was a surprise, just wait till you see who joined the party. The blueprint, Matt Morgan. And there it is, the post-match showdown, punctuated by the blueprint, Matt Morgan. Just having his way with Graham, something that we have not seen here in TNA. Will it happen here tonight at Slammiversary? And his opponent from Fairfield, Connecticut, the Blueprint, Matt Morgan! Matt Morgan goes seven feet, about 320 pounds, and until this past Wednesday, it had been two years since we saw Matt Morgan in Impact Wrestling. He's a two-time tag team champion, and you just get the feeling, Mike, that if Matt Morgan would have stuck around a little longer, multiple-time world champion, he could be X Division champion if he wanted. <laughs> Take the tag team titles. I mean, the blueprint, Matt Morgan, he, he really is the blueprint of what a wrestler should look like. Could not agree more. And I think we're going to hear from Matt Morgan with some pre match comments. Always one of those guys that you said was a can't miss prospect. God, that feels good. It feels good being back home. But that said, I know the impact zone. The impact zone didn't see the seven foot, 330 pound freak of nature. The blueprint Matt Morgan come all the way back here just to wrestle now, did we? Bram, they don't want to see us wrestle. They want to see us fight. So if you're as tough as you say you are, you'll accept it. Street fight right here, right here. Now, street fight. I, I don't know about that. Against Bram? With his, I mean, that, that street fight? Bram's not going to back down at all from a street fight from Matt Morgan, and this match is on. I mean, I love the confidence of the blueprint Matt Morgan, but to me, asking for a street fight against Bram, that is playing right into Bram's hands right now. And there are, not a, lot, there are not a lot of people that Bram looks up to on the Impact roster. Bram goes every bit of six foot nine inches tall, and he was looking right up at Matt Morgan. Absolutely, you gotta know one thing. 
you mentioned about hell freezing over where there's a guy that kicked the door in once it was frozen and his name is Matt Morgan. But I don't know if he knows enough about the maniacal Ooh. nutcase that is Bram to play into his game with a street fight, Josh. Bram started calling out past members of the Impact roster. He defeated Crimson. He made easy work of Joseph Park. Vader showed up and now Matt Morgan. And let's not forget, as you said, Josh, seven feet tall, over, close to 300, if not over it. And you know what else, Josh? Matt Morgan, I mean, we're not talking about this guy's physique here. We're not talking about two years off and how well this guy looks. Matt Morgan being in the best shape of his career, or life, that is. And a supreme athlete, let's be honest. The only professional wrestler who played in the NCAA basketball tournament, the seven-footer, Said tonight he was 330 Ooh. pounds, played center for Monmouth University. And Mike, you've had the privilege of calling all of the impact matches for Matt Morgan's career. What do you Many have to say about Matt Morgan? Well, I tell you what, you look back at Matt Morgan, the two-time TNA Ooh. World Tag Team Champion, like you mentioned. One of those title reigns with Hernandez, now remember the BDC. Ooh. One of those title reigns with Crimson, who was a recent victim of Bram on Impact Wrestling. Pope, do you think that Crimson and Matt Morgan spoke about Bram as Matt Morgan was preparing for this match here tonight? Absolutely. You got to know Matt Morgan is a veteran. He's been around. Listen, I've been in the ring with Matt Morgan. I've had my battles with Matt Morgan. And, and, and you know, we go all the way back to starting this business together. OVW. Absolutely. You're talking, what, 10 years ago? And, and let me tell you something. When you get in the ring and you face a competitor like Matt Morgan, you too have to do your research. So when you talk about whether or not he was prepared, I am so certain that Matt Morgan and Crimson, with the relationship that they have to this day, stayed in contact. I mean, you crossed paths way back then, but you also faced Matt Morgan many times here in TNA. Absolutely. And you know what, Daddy? I left hurting every single time. It looks like Bram just wants to leave. Uh, Bram trying to escape Matt Morgan. And Bram's got a hold of something there. Bram's not afraid to use weapons. He's got a turnbuckle from underneath the ring and right to the midsection of Matt Morgan. And now off the face. Morgan should expect that. Morgan's the one that asked for this to be a street fight. Absolutely, Professor. And when you ask for something of this nature, you got to be the one to capitalize on it first. I don't know what Mr. Morgan was thinking. Maybe Matt was thinking, hey, I'm just going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to beat his butt all over the impact zone. But he should have went out and he grabbed the trash can like Bram is doing. Matt Morgan should have gone back and watched what Bram did to his one-time best friend, Magnus. He took a cue ball and bounced it off the, man's, uh, the back of the man's neck and took Magnus out oh. for weeks. Yo, well, Josh, no cookies for you tonight. I don't even know what you said. I'm trying to respond, but I don't know what you said. Oh, the cookie sheet. Okay. Maybe draw him a map. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll tweet it to well, him later. The, the, the violence that Bram is bringing into this match, and you mentioned that I'm not going to eat cookies later. Well, Danny, I only envision that it's your cooking sheet that you keep here in the backstage of Impact Zone. But let's focus on the action. Let's focus on the athletes. Let's focus on the fact that Bram has the seven-footer lying on his back in the middle. Well, not in the middle, but on the side of the ring. And we'll see if Bram can get Matt Morgan back to his feet here. Matt Morgan may be out, but Bram wants to continue to dish out punishment. You know, Bram, he may be at an experience disadvantage against Matt Morgan in this oh. matchup. But this is right up Bram's alley. The street fight rules just really open it up for him. You know, Bram's still looking for his first title reign. But to me, it's just a matter of time. Tremendous upside, in my opinion, for Bram. And if they're selling stock in Bram, I'm buying. Yeah, I've often said that Bram is a future world champion here. Bram just needs that one signature victory and I think Bram is you know at any given night that could happen here on Impact Wrestling. Well I mean Matt Morgan as you guys mentioned former multiple uh, tag team champion Matt Morgan has been to the top he's beaten the likes of, of great men in this sport you know he's beaten the things and and he's had great battles with his Kurt Angles uh, could this be that victory that you speak of? I believe it's only a matter of time before we'll find out as these two men have been just beating each other. The physicality has been off the chart. 
complexion of this match switched totally in favor of Bram, not surprisingly, once they went out to the floor and once Bram was able to employ weapons against Morgan. And again, it goes back to what you said earlier, Mike. Why would Matt Morgan demand a street fight here against Bram? Well, as a competitor, Josh, as Matt Morgan goes Ooh. for the side slam there, he should have went for the cover as well. But maybe he's calling for the choke slam, and I think that's what he wants to do. But as a competitor, Josh, I don't understand him just calling for it. Why hasn't he used a weapon yet? And Matt Morgan may feel that he's one move away from defeating Bram, who's trying to avoid disaster here. Bram now trying to create separation. Stay away from Matt Morgan. Whoa. The Corbin footprint, I believe he calls it. Wow. You were looking. Carbon footprint with the trash can involved. These two are well conditioned. These two may be able to go all night here in this street fight. Well, there's one thing you can't do, and that's prepare for the maniacal nutcase that is Bram. You just can't do it. He's too unpredictable. He reminds me of a young bruiser, bro. I mean, you just can't prepare for that type of athlete. You just never know what Bram is going to do next as he's looking underneath the ring here, looking for more weapons, looking for more ways to pick apart Matt Morgan. Bram is psychotic. You can't seem to find anything like that. Well, maybe you just can't find what, he, what exactly he wants. I don't know. Why don't you tweet him that? He's getting frustrated now. He's getting frustrated. He's getting a little flustered. And all of this is allowing Matt Morgan to recuperate and recover in the middle of the ring. Matt Morgan's trying to catch his win back, and Graham's frustration may, may come back to haunt him here. What was he looking for? He, he, he seems confused right now. Graham is going to opt with the steel chair here. Huh? Out of the other side of the ring. Oh, why don't you go ask him what he's looking for? No, 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 no. This appears to be some sort of scavenger hunt. Mike, I mean, have you ever seen anything like this? Brandon needs to get back in the ring and try to help it, try to beat Matt Morgan. I think whatever it is he was looking for, he's going to settle for steel chairs. You don't want to make Bram angry, but when he's angry, when he's frustrated, yeah. he might be able to catch him off his game. Absolutely, but I'm trying to figure out what exactly was the mindset, which I shouldn't be doing. Oh, because it might come to backfire. As you mentioned, Josh, he gave Ooh. Matt Morgan time to catch his win. Three big shots there by Matt Morgan. It looked as if Bram was looking for the brighter side of suffering. His signature maneuver, the DDT, out of those steel chairs. Morgan has it hooked. Got him throttled right here. Gonna take him up, and this time, oh! Oh, he not only nails the choke slam this time, but the back of Bram crashes off the steel. Matt Morgan needs to go for the cover here. Matt Morgan needs a sense of urgency. Matt Morgan hooks the inside leg, Bram's down, and Bram kicks out at two. Are you kidding me? Did you see how high Matt Morgan took him up with that choke slam, driving his back and his neck onto that steel chair, and Bram still had the wherewithal to kick out? Yeah, and you sense frustration. The close-up look on the face of the blueprint Matt Morgan. After he did not get the three count, Morgan thought for sure he had the win. Choke slam on the chair, and well, let's see what he's got in mind here for Bram. Finally, Morgan taking the initiative to use the steel oh, chair. Low blow by Bram, it's all legal. This is a street fight. And now the brighter side of Ooh. suffering under the oh, steel chair, and Bram is going to defeat Matt Morgan at Slammiversary. Wow. Your winner, Bram! Multiple times in this match, Bram's frustrations, his short views, it almost cost him against Matt Morgan. Morgan back here at Slammiversary. And Matt Morgan, very competitive against Bram in this matchup. You pointed out that we hadn't seen Matt Morgan in two years. Hope it's not another two years before we have the opportunity to see the blueprint back here on Impact Wrestling. There it is, brighter side of suffering. The DDT and an advantage. Steel chair leads to the pin, leads to the win. Chalk up another one for Bram. So Bram with another victory. Ooh, sights. Is Bram looking to do now? Where does Bram go next as he continues?
continues to climb the ladder here in Impact Wrestling. As you look at the carnage inside the Impact Zone. A big hello to everybody watching around the world tonight, live in France, live in India, live in the United Kingdom, and of course, live across North America on pay-per-view. This is Slammiversary. We appreciate all of your feedback. Hashtag Slammiversary and everything you post. We're reading it here backstage. My guests at this time, set for tag team action later on tonight against Mr. Anderson and the Destroyer Lashley. It's Ethan Carter III and Tyrus. Gentlemen, are you set for action tonight? JB, this is this is the biggest week of my life. And I stand here, I feel like a champion. I look like a champion. And this Wednesday, at Bell to Bell, the entire world will see me become a champion when I defeat Kurt Angle. But tonight is Slammiversary, and I just, I just wanna say it's not always about me, man. It's not always. Boss. It's always about you. That's the plan. That's why we train. That's why you have the best weights, training skills, and money can buy today. And security. Security. So you, you worry about Kurt Angle. And I'll worry about Ken, Bobby, and Destroyer Lashley. Mr. Anderson, Lashley. Did you just correct me? Yeah. Because you see, this Wednesday, the reign of Carter begins, and there's going to be some Changes around here. Ooh, I can feel them now. I can feel them now. And JB, they start with your toupee. What? That's my real hair. I grow back. Wisconsin, Austin Aries! Austin Aries is a six-time X Division champion. Longest reigning X Division champion in company history. TNA world champion and former tag team champion. Austin Aries has done it all in Impact Wrestling. And I think that's why, at least to me on the surface, Austin Aries is gonna have the advantage in this one-on-one -on -one match. Davey Richards has been concentrating so much on tag team wrestling as part of the world. You, you see Austin Aries and you just had the incredible resume and all of the singles championships he has. Important stakes in this match though, as it pertains to the TNA World Tag Team titles. We'll tell you all about that right after this. And his opponent, one half of the Wolves, Davey Richards! The winner of this one-on-one -on -one match between Davey Richards and Austin Aries will get to choose the stipulation in match number five in the Best of Series for the vacant TNA World Tag Team titles. It has been an incredible series. It ends Wednesday night, but how it ends, we find out here tonight between Aries and Richards. And how incredible is it gonna be Wednesday night? Impact Wrestling, so much at stake that night. We're gonna go bell to bell. Yeah, we're gonna have match five in the TNA World Tag Team Title Series. So much more. Match number one in the best of five series was awesome. It went to the Wolves. Match number two also belonged to the Wolves. The backs of the dirty heels were up against the wall. They won match number three. Match number four, because Eddie Edwards defeated Bobby Roode, was full metal mayhem. That was also won by the Dirty Heels. Match number five happens Wednesday at Bell to Bell. Like Mike said, a ton happening Wednesday night, including EC3 versus Kurt Angle for the World Championship. Go around here, Josh, catch your breath. Hope want to talk about how privileged we are. I want to talk about how privileged the fans are that we get to witness yet again the team of the Wolves and the Dirty Hills going one more time, one more match 
And I'm telling you, this Best of Five series has ignited TNA and has taken us to heights unknown, Daddy. I mean, tag team wrestling in TNA. You go back and, and think of the incredible series of matches that we had towards the end of last year. And then bringing it forward this year to have the competition between the Dirty Heels and the Wolves. And it's why TNA wrestling just has such an incredible tag team division. Absolutely. Because when you talk to people about Impact Wrestling, they talk about the X Division. They talk about the knockouts. And they talk about the incredible tag team competition. I can't wait for match number five. I can't wait to see how this match develops. And guys, any sort of speculation on what stipulation they may choose for match number five? How do you know? Yeah, I expect for the winning team to choose something that is going to play to their advantage, obviously, Josh. That's what the smart team will do. So uh, we'll have to see how this play out tonight. And uh, great anticipation, I, I might say. So when Eddie Edwards chose Full Metal Mayhem, the Wolves believed that that match would behoove them. It didn't. The heels were victorious. So you have to be careful with the choosing of the stipulation. Yeah, we saw that in the last match when it came to Matt Morgan, right? No doubt about it. Matt Morgan wanted a street fight against Bram. Matt Morgan brought the fight to the Chesterfield flag, but in the end, Bram was victorious. Tigre Uno retained the X Division Championship in the first match of the evening, and we still have the return of King of the Mountain in our main event. Absolutely. Matt Morgan chose to, instead of playing chess, he wanted to play some street ball, and uh, it didn't play to his advantage. Standing switch there by Austin Aries. Davey Richards does the same, as does Aries. Back and forth they go. And not to mention, Robbie E defeated Jesse. So what's next in the careers for Robbie and Jesse? Cover here. Aries pops free at two. Davey misses wildly. And Austin Aries going to buy himself some time. Smart move by Austin Aries, trying to slow down the momentum, I would think, uh, just by getting over there and avoiding that kick that was coming his way by Davey Richards. For Austin Aries, this is the fifth time that he has competed at a Slammiversary pay-per-view event. I look back over some of the matches that he had, 2012, defeating Samoa Joe in Dallas, Texas in an X Division Championship match. Last year at Slammiversary, Austin Aries, he beat Kenny King early in the night to earn a spot in the three-way cage match for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. So Austin Aries is very familiar with the high-stakes matches at a Slammiversary pay-per-view event. Mike, what do you think it is about Austin Aries where he always finds himself with options? I think he's a smart man. I think he's one step ahead of the game. Maybe Richards trying to stay one step ahead of Austin Aries. A shot there by Aries. Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards, the Wolves, already three-time tag team champions in their, I would say, early careers here at Impact Wrestling. And if you think about it, Richards' goal is for the Wolves to become four-time TNA World Tag Team Champions, quite obviously. Deciding match five is going to determine if the Wolves can equal the record of four oh. TNA World Tag Team title reigns, oh. that record held by Beer Money. And we are guaranteed new tag team champions this upcoming Wednesday night at Bell to Bell in match number five between the Dirty Heels and the Wolves. Once again, Austin Aries going back outside. Let's, let's press the reset button, if you will. Let's slow this thing down so he can try to get back in and make this chess game work to his advantage. Pope, let me ask you, Austin Aries, Professor and I have been talking about his career throughout this matchup. Davey Richards, more of a tag team specialist. Does that sort of allow Austin Aries to have an advantage in this matchup? But you got to assume such. Uh, both men are supreme athletes, and each of them have their own way of, of, of getting to the top, if you will, of, of pulling out victories that are unexpected. But yes, Austin has had a great singles career. Davey is used to have a career in the tag team, so we'll have to wait and see. Nice maneuver by Davey Richards. Not the close oh. Oh, kick. Well, Pope, I was going to agree with you. On paper, yes, it looks like advantage Austin Aries. But how about that drop kick? The leg extension by Davey Richards sends Austin Aries out to the floor where he's going to try and regroup and slow things down.
Ben Stanieri is perhaps taken out of his game against Davey Richards. And you got to wonder, is that what he's trying to do to Davey Richards? Getting him a little flustered, frustrated, getting him out of his game? I mean, David wants to action on the inside of the ring. A shot there by Davey Richards to Austin Aries. Aries staying away from what I have to assume was going to be a suicide dive by Davey Richards. And to me, the way that he avoided that suicide dive, it tells me that Austin Aries wants to dictate the pace of this match. In other words, not let Davey Richards go crazy with high risk flying moves, like that suicide dive that he had set up. Oh. Davey able to use those steel steps against the shoulder of Aries. Well, you know what happens if a snowball goes down the mountain, don't you, Professor? Tell me. It gets bigger and bigger, and after a while, it turns into something massive. And that's what Austin Aries is trying to keep from happening right here. He doesn't want the attack of Davey Richards to turn into something massive. Yeah, watch watch out. Out. Austin Aries trying to avoid the avalanche from Davey Richards. And right out here in front of us, right in your living room, Davey Richards bringing the fight to Austin Aries. The primal howl from one half of the Wolves. Yeah, have a seat, Austin. Shot after shot, left hand after left hand from Davey Richards. Davey Richards wisely gets Austin Aries back into the ring. Is Davey one move away from victory? One move away from the Wolves selecting the stipulation for match number five. Well, Josh Pope has not won the suit, but it appeared that Davey Richards was setting up for that flying headbutt. But what is Austin Aries setting up for? See, this is about Aries. Aries, oh. yeah, he did not want to allow Davey Richards to have the high-risk moves like that. Able to turn things around. Richards crouched in the corner initially, and that opened the door for Austin Aries to go top rope. We've got to take another look. Here's the replay. Perched up on top is Aries. Oh. And there it is, the shot, the double sledge to the top of the head of Richards. And now it's Aries in control. And you saw Austin Aries moments ago before the replay there, clutching at his arm. I don't know how much damage has been done, but now Austin Aries, turn him out here in this matchup. Yeah, speaking about lefts that we saw from Richards earlier. Oh, oh. Bam! Series of lefts from Aries, and then punctuated by the slap, the chop to the chest. And Austin Aries now sends Davey Richards into the ring. What a chop across the chest that was. I got the sweat on my forehead. I was going to say, there nobody closer than you, right? Absolutely. And Aries slingshots himself back into the ring. And Austin Aries drops the elbow right to the chest. Cover here on Davey, who kicks out at one. What kind of message does that send to Austin Aries when Davey Richards kicked out so early? He has a lot more work to do. He's saying I got a lot more fight in this wolf tank of mine. Get him out, get him out. This one David Rich is now Austin Aries taking some cheap shots, cheap cuts, foot to the neck. Oh, rocket forearm shots out of the corner. Richards tries to fight his way out of the corner, but Aries closes the gap. Nice snap there, there by Austin Aries. Austin Aries very comfortable up on that second row, elbow right to the back of the neck. Hooks the inside leg. Davey Richards kicks out at two. Just precision right there, Josh. He, he couldn't have placed that elbow in the back of the neck any more better than he did. How fluid is Austin Aries? It's like poetry in motion, isn't it? Just to watch Austin Aries. Even when he runs the ropes, even when he goes for a dive move, you just see it. It's, he's so comfortable with it. Like a stream of water. Everything is calculated. Everything makes sense in the offense of Austin Aries. Maybe Richards trying to create some separation here. It's back and forth matchup. Austin Aries! That's, oh that, that's that comfort zone. Aries into the cover. Has Austin Aries done enough? Davey Richards kicks out at two. Springboard back elbow. Shades of the great Buddha and the greatest man that ever lived says, hey, I can do it too, and just as well. And it almost feels like the longer this match goes, Mike, again, how comfortable does Austin Aries look? 
And it, to me, like we pointed out right at the outset, right at the top of this matchup, in terms of singles competition, ooh, it looks like Aries has the advantage. The longer it goes, the way I look at it, that's advantage Aries, but Davey Richards won't take no for an answer. Fights back with the kicks, but oh, shut down quickly. I poke by Aries. Davey Richards still able to stay on his game and reverse Austin Aries. Davey Richards building Here's steam. Going. Suicide dive right to the chest of Austin Aries. Exactly what he wanted to do earlier in this matchup. Finally there, opportunity presents itself. And as we're going to take another look at the contest made, here it is. This one Davey Richards. I've never seen a suicide dive play so accurately so beautifully by Davy Richards. And how will Davy Richards follow up missile drop kick? Shot himself like a missile, Josh. Didn't want Davy Richards, just like you said. Davy Richards brought his knees all the way into his chest. I don't know what's gotten into you tonight, Pope. You're showing off for somebody. It's obviously the professor here at ringside. He's feeling it. Yes. It's slam anniversary. Let it loose, Pope. And Davy Richards. Into the cover. Hooks one leg, Greg Bonds the other. Austin Aries kicks out at two. Just trying to live up to the great man you are, Josh. Did you see what he said? Yep. He said, Bobby, Bobby, he's turning, he's looking for a tag. Austin Aries, after all of these incredible matches between the Dirty Heels and the Wolves, Aries might not know where he is right now. And, and, and it's funny because you guys pointed this out earlier, who would it play to being in this single matchup, and I'm shocked. Pope is actually shocked that Austin is the one who's reaching for his partner and not Davey, uh, uh, who's accustomed to having a partner. What a kick there by Davey Richards. German suplex hits luck, and Davey Richards was a half a second away from defeating Austin Aries. So close for Davey Richards to be able to name the stipulation for match five in the tag team series. Again. Aries outside, maybe he just did get rocked. Got his bell rung so much that he's looking around for, for Rude at ringside. Seems to be the case. And Austin Aries now trying to do anything he can to play defense. Just right in the face and the eyes of Davy Richards off the top rope. Goes low, Austin Aries lands on his feet, and Aries boxes the ears. Oh! Three times. Austin Aries, trademark Austin Aries in the head of Davy Richards has got to be ringing. Oh, man. Turn about fair play that time, sized him up, and just like we saw earlier when Davy Richards connected with the dive, this time it's Austin Aries right on the money. Pope, is it almost like anything you can do, I can do better? You took the worst round right of the mouth, Josh. If you could jump six inches, I'll jump six inches and one more. That'd be seven. And look at that. Again, the top rope drop kick, just like we saw after the Richards dive, Absolutely. this time by Austin Aries. And how will Aries follow it up? Davey Richards counters. What a match. I don't know if he got all of it right there, Josh. No, but it was enough to stop Absolutely. that flying full speed corner drop kick by Aries. Took away a lot of the impact, a lot of the effect. Richards misses wildly. Austin Aries trying to take advantage, trying to put away Davey Richards. Last chancery. And check the ring positioning here. Richards has an awful long ways to go if he's looking for a rope break. Davey Richards clawing, scratching, gets to the bottom rope, and Austin Aries forced to break the hole. Pope, how about the way he was able to swing and the position changed so that instead of reaching and grabbing with his hand, he ended up using his legs, his foot, to get contact with the rope for the break. Absolutely. What happened right there is the perspiration, the sweat that is on both men. It prevented Austin Aries once he got his hands locked from keeping it. And Aries, Aries, Pope, sorry to interrupt you, but Austin Aries thinking brain buster. Nice counter by Davey Richards. Perfect counter. And Aries to the top of the head. And Davey Richards goes low. Back and forth and slam anniversary. Oh, man! That time he caught him with that full speed corner drop kick, and now he's going to go brain buster. Aries, if he connects here, Aries is going to be done. What an exchange, what a night, what a match.
everything that we expected and more from these two. High stakes situation, stipulation for match five in the TNA World Tag Team Title Series at stakes. And you're right, you can hear the crowd here in Orlando, Florida. This is awesome. Two of the greatest wrestlers in the world going one on one. The professor said high stakes when this match started. Who will become tag team champions after bell to bell on Wednesday? Who will win this incredible one on one match? Strike after strike from oh. both men. Jumping headbutt by Richards. And Austin Aries not allowing any sort of separation for Davy Richards. Oh! oh. Wow. Elevates Aries, connects with the kick. Full speed. Ooh. This time, single boot right to the head of Aries. Nice Team throw there. Nice throw by Davy Richards. It was a T-ball suplex, Josh. And we'll see if Davy Richards can put away Austin Aries. And right now, Davy Richards to the top. Oh! Double stop! Did he get it all? Did Davy Richards get it all? Hooks the leg of Aries, and Austin Aries kicks out at two. Could not get much closer than that. And there's Bobby Roode. What are the dirty heels up to now? The Roode down here. And, and, oh, 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 check it out. Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards not going to allow the dirty heels to steal the victory. And that's exactly what happened. Your winner, Austin Harry. And with that victory, the Dirty Heels will select the stipulation for match number five for the TNA World Tag Team Titles this Wednesday at Bell to Bell. And here's how it went down. From behind, the quick roll up. And that enables Austin Aries not only to get the win, but for the dirty heels to be able to, to name the stiff. The great Hannibal Smith. I love it when a plan comes together. Seen I outclassed you, Davy Richards. Seen I outwrestled you. We get to make the stipulation for the final. Match five to see who are the new World Tag Team Champions. We've been listening. We've been listening to the people, and we're going to give you exactly what you want. It's going to be the Wolves versus the Dirty Heels in a bra and panties match. Just kidding. No, 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 no. No, we're going to do what the Dirty Heels do best. We go longer and we go harder than anybody. In that ring, it's gonna be a 30 minute tag team Iron Man match. Hell yes! That's more like it. That's right. It happens Wednesday on Destination America at Bell to Bell, a 30 minute Iron Man match in match number five. If you thought Full Metal Mayhem was incredible, what's gonna happen in a 30-minute Iron Man match? Most pinfalls, most, most submissions, and we'll crown new tag team champions. Josh, I have to tell you, I absolutely love the idea of an Iron Man match. In a match this important, deciding the tag team title. To me, Iron Man rules the true task. No flukes, no excuses at all in this match. I can't wait for bell to bell. But when it comes down to the Iron Man matches, what Pope personally loves about it is, is there going to be a pinfall? How many pinfalls will there be? Will it go to a draw? These two tag teams, the Wolves and the Hills, they have the ability to go all the way to the end. Quickly, quickly, predictions. Who leaves as tag team champions? Pope's going to go with the Hills. It's so close. It's so close. It's a coin flip between these two. I'll play devil's advocate. I'll say the Wolves. We'll find out what happens this upcoming Wednesday night on Destination America at Bell to Bell, standing by in the locker room area, our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash.
A historic night tonight for so many reasons. It's slam anniversary, and tonight, five men will enter the King of the Mountain match. It's been five years since the last King of the Mountain match, and tonight, my guest at this time will be one of the five competitors, Eric Young, set to do battle in this epic matchup. I'm ready, JB. I'm ready to be the new King of the Mountain. Drew Galloway, Matt Hardy, Bobby Roode. Three men at the top of their game. But I'm one step better. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Global, TV, X, Tag, World. Those are all the titles here, and I've held every single one. And that brings me to you, Jeff Jarrett. You got a long history here. You're the original King of the Mountain. You're the reason this match exists. But look at my eyes. Ask me if I'm worried. Ask me if I'm scared. I'm not scared of anybody. But you should be. Everyone thought I couldn't be awesome Tom. <laughs> Well, we shocked the world, didn't we, girls? <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. No, Bunny thought I could do it, so Bunny thought I could be calm. I'm here to put everyone on notice. You're not going to beat me. And if you mess with me, mess with my friends. And we don't play very nice. Nobody is going to beat me. This. The dollhouse. So, there I was in the steel cage, locked away with the greatest women's wrestler of all time, Yoko. It's now time for you to live in my shadow. I made sure she never got up. Bye-bye, Gail. There are three of us. Bye-bye. And you are alone. <laughs> I no longer live in your shadow. I am the toughest and the sexiest. What I have on will get your blood pumping in a whole new way. Honk does not look amused. Honk, you're ruining playtime! Oh, and Austin Kong takes off Marty and Jay. Kong not here to talk for the dollhouse. Not here for the antics. Here comes two-time knockouts champion, Brooke. Oh! And Brooke all over Taryn Terrell. Now look what she's done. She's a spolder. It's Taryn who's embarrassed right now. The next thing I'm going to take is that knockout title. Sexy. Powerful. Strong. Athletic. The TNA Wrestling Knockouts. Dollhouse, so let's hear what they have to say. I am the greatest knockouts champion in history. Not to mention the longest reigning. And we, oh, we are your biggest fantasy and we're in your dreams every night. We're the dollhouse, the sexiest group of girls that walk this planet. Brooke, ill. Awesome Kong, double ill. They think that they have the advantage. They think that they are going to take my title next week on Impact. Well, I've got news flash for you, ladies. We have the advantage tonight, which means that we will have the advantage next week. Let me remind you that when you look like us and when you fight, like us, you quickly learn that this is our house, the doll house. It's playtime.
and their opponent, producing first Houston, Texas, Brooks! Brought of Houston two time knockouts champion. Look, I agree with Taryn. They do have the advantage of the Dow House tonight, but do the math. Taryn Terrell is not going to have the advantage this Wednesday at Bell to Bell. Certainly doesn't seem so, does it? Not the way you laid it out just moments ago. In her mind, she does. I hate to uh, rent real estate in the mind of Taryn Terrell. And her tag team partner from Tokyo, Japan, Awesome Kong! Hope I know you love the dollhouse. But the reason that the Dow House came together is because Taryn Terrell realized that she couldn't beat Awesome Kong on her own, thus brought in Jade and Marty Bell. Well, Josh, this is the moment that Pope is going to agree with you. Uh, awesome Kong, a awesome, awesome physical specimen in the woman that she is in the knockout division. And you know what? There's a lot of men that can be awesome. to beat Jade Marty on Impact Wrestling. Brooke joined me earlier today for the Slammiversary Preview on Impact Wrestling's official YouTube channel. And the way Brooke put it, she feels that this is a five on three match. She feels that Awesome Kong is like multiple knockouts and they have the advantage here tonight at Slammiversary. Wow, so you're saying Brooke? Brooke feels his five on three, so she has the advantage. Brooke this feels is very confident in the ability of Awesome Kong, and I think she should. I think she's right on the money there, too. She's been in the ring against her. She's been her tag team partner. She knows oh. what Awesome Kong brings to the ring. Marty Bell, Jade, and Taryn taken out by Awesome Kong. They won't be partners Wednesday when they challenge Taryn for the Knockouts Championship. But right now, Brooke and Awesome Kong have a common enemy in the dollhouse. As Pope mentioned earlier, Josh, Professor, if I'm going into a fight, there are times that I think I'll bring Awesome Kong and have her on my side as well because she is just impressive. She's awesome and she can stand her ground against almost anybody. It was ridiculous, really, Mike, when you think about it. Taryn comes out, says, I'm gonna give Awesome Kong a match for the Knockouts Championship, eh, but it's gonna be a lingerie pillow fight. It was a joke. Right. And, and Brooke looked at that as the ultimate sign of disrespect to all the other Knockouts in the division. Yet at the same time, I think to me, it just riled up Awesome Kong even more. Well, Josh, Pope got to beg to differ with you again. And, and it seems like we often do sometimes, but why is it disrespectful for it to be a Brian Pettis match with Awesome Kong and not be disrespectful when it's a Brian Pettis match against any other knockout. When's the last time that you saw a match like that here in Impact Wrestling? I don't Times know. have changed, Pope. I don't That's know. 2015. I, I, I surely look forward to a Brian Pettis match for the knockout. I can tell you that much. This is Jade in there with Awesome Kong in this three-on-two handicap tag team match. The numbers game would say that the Dow House has the advantage, but in the early so going, far. well, in the early going, right. Awesome Kong was in control. Yeah, if they had a pre-match strategy where they wanted to use that three-on-two to their advantage, they've not used it to this point. Although it looks like now they're trying to take down, trying to chop down the bigger Awesome Kong. Just look at Terrence Terrell. Terrell looks Pretty comfortable up there, doesn't she? Yeah, just relaxing on the ring post there. She's just hanging out, calling the shots, calling orders here to Jade and Marty. Taryn Terrell, I mean, she's lost her mind. Oh, my, what a splash! This match is going to be over here. Marty misses. Also, Carl seemed to be prepared for something and changed her mind and said, hell, I got her on the mat. I'm going to go ahead and splash her. And it looks like uh, she's done oh. again. Just hanging out on the apron. 
waiting and watching and seeing if Jade and Marty can get something going. Top rope flying Hurricane Rana by Brooke. That was impressive. Hey, come on, Jade. Hey, start the eyes. And it all started when Awesome Kong delivered the big splash here to Jade in the center of the ring and Marty. Professor. I just gotta ask you the question, why do you believe that Tara should be in the ring right now when she has two others that's getting their hands dirty for her? Because she had the chance right there to come in and maybe break up the pin attempt on her two partners. Maybe, maybe, help, her, maybe help her partners a little bit? No, instead she's perched up on top, directing traffic. They are there, they are there for a reason. They know what that reason Marty, is. Marty, cover, hooks the leg. I, I mean, I think we all realize that Jade and Marty are here to do the heavy lifting for Taryn. Well, I think you guys need to cut Taryn some slack. I don't think uh, Taryn gives a damn about the other two members of the Dow House. When Brooke came out here to get after Taryn, it was Taryn standing in the ring, not caring at all, but also calling it, taking out Jade and Marty. Taryn's in this for herself. You know, I don't think cover, should be so cover, hard. Cover, cover, and a kick out. Just cut the champ some slack. She's the longest reigning knockout champ in history. I congratulated her when she crossed and broke the record. Absolutely. It was 211 days. Yes, she did. And I think we should pay a little bit more respect to her. Let's, let's take it easy, guys. I love our knockout champ. And the dollhouse. A unique bear hug with the arm trapped here by Jade. Just poked this, this getting Holden Brook in this type of uh, maneuver here, this bear hug, we, this is different than we usually see. It has to take the toll on Brooke, right? Well, she was trying to prevent her from doing just what she did. She locked the arm behind the back and sits in low. Absolutely. But she did that to prevent, uh, what do you like to call that move there? Uh, the boxing of the ears. Absolutely, because we all know that's a very effective maneuver that every wrestler often goes to to break out the bear hug, and they're in win. We saw Austin Aries use it effectively a little while ago against Davey Richards. And here comes the game changer, Awesome Paul. The tag was made. Yeah, it was behind the back of the referee. Distraction by the ball house. Referee Stickler did not see it. Tag as a result, not legal. And now, oh, well, of course, Terry Terrell's going to get involved now. This is unbelievable. The tag was made by Brooke to Awesome Kong. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Well, this isn't. This is television, not radio. As Marty goes for the cover, Pope was just saying hi to Jade, who was over here uh, near our announce table. Reversal there by Brooke. Marty into the corner. Oh! What looked for a split second like Brooke was going to make the tag to call. Instead, went for the offense. Oh! And that time, they able to take Marty down. Can Brooke now finally make the tag to Awesome Call? Brooke basically had to start all over after she originally made the tag, unbeknownst to the official. Therefore, it makes it illegal. So she has to do it, and the official has to see it. And now the dollhouse needs to get it together right now, because I know they don't want to face what's about to come. Marty made the tag, so did Brooke, and here comes Awesome Kong, and there goes Jane. Quick strikes there by Awesome Kong. Missed with that spinning back fist. Able to get the clothesline, oh. but there! Flying cross body That's gonna do it! Oh. That's gonna do it! And Marty Bell breaks it up in two. Oh, poor Marty. Yeah, it's gonna take both of them to even try to put an impressive gin of sorts into Awesome Kong. Kong just went in through that double clothesline attempt by Marty and Jade like they weren't even there. Absolutely. And Brooke off the top rope! Very impressed by that high fly double clothesline off the top rope by the pride of Texas, Brooke. Yeah, and speaking of Texas and Slammiversary, Brooke won the knockouts title at Slammiversary 2012 in her home state. Oh. And can Brooke and Awesome Kong be victorious here at this Slammiversary 2015? I wouldn't count them out, Josh. They, they're definitely looking like they're about to come out on top right now. Been a chaotic match here. Look up top. Lance Jade with the Butterface Maker. The cover tries to hook the leg, and she got her. What a match. Four winners, Awesome Kong and Bruce. Awesome Kong challenged Terrence Terrell for the Knockouts Championship.
So far here at Slammiversary and up next, we're going to be seeing the results of one of the most intense personal feuds in Impact Wrestling history. My guest at this time, Magnus. This match tonight, unsanctioned here in the Impact Zone. It's the 13th anniversary of the little company with big, big dreams. It's Slammiversary in good old Orlando, Florida. The stars are out. I'm ready to shine, and tonight, the smart money is, is that two of TNA's biggest and brightest stars shine bright on pay-per-view for the last time. James Storm, I'll say this because I know that you're an original, but people can say what they want about this company, and I know you do, but damn it, for six years, this company has been my home. It's given me some great memories, some great times, and I grew up in this company and I'm proud of it. But you tried to take my life away from me, James. You went for Donovan. You went for Mickey. And I love that woman, man. And tonight, I don't hate you even though I want to. I love my family. And tonight, I have to believe that love is stronger than hate, no matter how much I like the way the hate feels. Because James Storm, the devil can't catch me tonight, because he's already inside. I do the right thing. Well, I appreciate it. What's up with Mickey Bay? Let me tell you something, Manic. Don't you ever question me. This time, as of tonight, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna be a mom. Thank you for the opportunity to do what I'd love to do. I see a woman who will stand up for what she believes in. Mickey, these people do not want you to go. Hey, all I'm asking for, just one more time. Okay, I'll do it. What was that all about? One more match. It's not such a bad idea. You know how much I love this business. Yeah, I know. Hey, man, can I talk to you real quick? This guy's the devil, man. I got a big favor to ask. You know, all this stuff's been going on with McGee. You could follow her for a while, just to keep an eye on her. Sure, no problem. Mickey! James! Well, fancy seeing you here. What are you doing here? Well, a man's got to eat, don't he? <laughs> Yes. Is that Donovan? Is it that is. The baby? Say What's hi. Up, baby? Hi, hi, James. Do you want to go to James? Oh, buddy. Do you want to come see the Wow. Whoa. Got him? Watch his head. Yeah, I got it. There we go. So where's Nick? Uh, he's back at the room. What is James Storm up to now? James Storm has hijacked the show to take a selfie with Mickey James. I don't think Magnus is uh, having any fun with this. Angels and demons. Wow! James Storm, I will never apologize for smashing a guitar over your head because you're a sick son of a bitch. So here we go. Magnus and Abyss. Enjoy him from behind. I did not ask you to do that. You do not do stuff that I did not ask for. Do you understand? This is between me and Mickey James. You and your son Donovan join me in my revolution. That is, Magnus is a nice son. After we've been friends all this time, you know this is something that I would never, look at me, ever do. I apologize. You know me. I don't apologize much. I I'm sorry. It looks like your train's pull up. What train? My train. <laughs> James, look, it's not my phone. Same phone. Ah! 
Team Storm, I'm gonna make this really simple for you. I'm gonna start cracking heads left and right until you show up and face me. I gave Mickey a chance, and she turned down pledging to the revolution. She is a sorry excuse for a woman. Magnus has fought his way through security. James Storm has gone way too far here tonight. Storm has pushed Magnus to the limit. After what he did to Mickey, I will not forget. I will not forget. The foaming contest is an anything goes unsanctioned match. Introducing first representing the revolution, the cowboy. James Storm! Storm and Magnus made an official a couple of days ago on ImpactWrestling.com. They signed the contract. This is unsanctioned. This, I have to say, is what James Storm wanted from the beginning. James Storm wanted to manipulate and play mind games with Magnus as Storm bitten off more than he could chew here tonight. In the 13 years of TNA, we have had our share of grudges, our share of rivalries, issues between wrestlers. But have we ever had anything that's as personal as this situation between James Storm and Magnus? We saw different shades of James Storm during this rivalry. What will James Storm do tonight? And his opponent from Kingsland, England, Magnus! This wants to get his hands on James Storm. Magnus knows that James Storm did mess with his life. He messed with his livelihood, and here we go. It's underway, it's unsanctioned, it's Storm versus Magnus. If you're watching this for a wrestling match, it's gonna be a brawl. Hope I've got to ask you, you have faced both James Storm and Magnus in the past. Very, very different styles to me. Storm, more of a brawler in my opinion. Magnus, more technical. I, what I want to ask you is, is my opinion right? In an unsanctioned match like this, I think it's advantage Storm. Well, you know what, Professor Pope's going to agree with you. I think it's the way both both of them are tremendous athletes, tremendous competitors, to have the drive to win. As we both know that both the former TNA World Heavyweight Champions. So I'm going to lead to where she say that Storm has the advantage. He's been in every type of match possible here at TNA. But after everything James Storm has done to Magnus, you guys can say that Storm has the advantage here? Well, you know what? Pope's going to agree with you too, Josh, because you, there's two things. What about his child? What about the mind games that Storm played with, with Donovan? Absolutely, but that comes with the game, man. Mind game, it's a game of chess. We've often referred to wrestling as a game of chess. And that is nothing more than James Storm trying to get into the head of one Magnus, if you will. How about the impact of that shot? It busted right through the steel guardrail. And now in this unsanctioned, anything goes matchup. It is spilled out past the crowd, now into the back area here in Orlando, Florida. Look like we're about some concessions, uh, Professor. And Magnus. Is Magnus going to attempt to powerbomb James Storm through that table? We'll never know. Back body drop and Magnus through the table. And I just sent a run to give me some popcorn. God dang it. Good job, James. Magnus down in this very serious rivalry. James Storm, early advantage. Storm now has seized control, and what else will James Storm do to Magnus here at Slammiversary? This matchup has the ability to go anywhere. It's where it gets dangerous out here. James Storm. Off the guardrail. Right out here in front of our side rushing leg sweep. Ability of Storm 
Reigns quickly turned this match in his favor. The boot, and then taking Magnus, driving him back first into the steel, and now Storm going uh, underneath the ring. This looks, looks familiar. Whoa. You're going too far. going too far. Wow. I hope Magnus kicks James Storm's ass here as they get back into the ring. And Magnus one step ahead with a clothesline. I don't know whether I set James Storm off right there, Professor, but uh, you okay, Josh? I don't know. He made eye contact with Josh. I saw that. In disrespect, that was sickening on the part of James Storm. Well, Magnus with the table now. Magnus has an opportunity here to win this unsanctioned matchup against the leader of the revolution, against James Storm. I mean, would you guys expect anything else from James Storm to come out here? and spit on me at the broadcast table after what he's done to Mickey James? After what he's done to Magnus' family in the low blow yeah, there? I guess, we, I guess we shouldn't be surprised in the least. Not at all. But James Storms right now with a low blow to Magnus as he's in the corner rather than Ooh. pain. Kick with a little separation there. But what is the table about to do? How's it coming into play? Oh, oh. that was different. By Magnus and Storm's head just rings off the table. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. I'm with you. Magnus takes advantage of the underneath part of that table, the metal part of that table. Who knows what part of the face of James Storm bounced off the, the metal part of the table there? Well, that underside of the table can be so dangerous because of the steel that surrounds the outside. Magnus taking the fight to Storm. Fought all over the impact zone in this unsanctioned one-on-one -on -one match. Oh! I don't even know what Storm hit Magnus with there. And look at the bruising and the welts on the back of Magnus. I don't know what he hit him with, Josh, but you could just feel and hear the impact of whatever it was. Come on, Storm! Oh! Storm! Shut up! Come on, Storm, get up there. That blood between these two as you hey, mentioned, Josh. Oh, high voltage. Just high voltage. Hey, it's a voltage back here, Dad. Got it? Go, hey. It's, it's high voltage, voltage area back there. It's not going to stop James Storm and Magnus. Come on, it's high voltage. Get out of here. It's not going to stop these two from tearing each other apart or tearing the impact zone apart. Lights flickering yeah. on and off here out in the arena, presumably because of what just went down and back. James Storm and Magnus continuing the, the fight here, this brawl here. Technicians working feverishly to make sure that the power stays on. And Magnus! Went high risk there. Storm senses that he's got an opening right here. Pulls first back cover in. of the match, first cover of the match, and Magnus kicks out at two. Realistically, that's the only role for referee Earl yep. Hefner in this match. Either make the three count, or the, attempt the three count on a pin, or be there on top of the situation if there's a submission. Other than that, we don't need a referee. I think the referee Earl Hamlet was checking on Magnus, asking if he was done or if he was okay. James Storm shot to the midsection there. Perhaps looking for the eye of the storm. Exactly what it is. But he's got that table in mind too, but Magnus able to drop down and avoid it. And now can Magnus put Storm through the table? Power bomb by Magnus on James Storm straight through the table. If he can get up, Josh, Professor. 
Professor, if you can cover him, it might be over. Magnus just has to crawl over and try to defeat James Storm. As we take another look, Storm looking for the eye of the storm. Madness counters and the power bomb through the table. Well, if you look at that replay right there, you see that Magnus had to dig down so deep to get the power to take that power bomb and drive Storm through the table. And as a result, it took him that time period to recover, and that prevented the pin attempt. And baseball see slide. Don't, don't see the baseball slide drop kick too often from Magnus. Magnus pulling out all the stops here. Oh! Trying to stay one step ahead of James Storm. And now Storm has Magnus. DDT into the ring. Get draping DDT. Defenseless Magnus. The way he was set up on the ring ropes there by Storm. Didn't give him an opportunity to escape once the legs and the feet were on the second rope of the ring. There's no way to go. And he didn't waste any time with it either, Janae. He went straight down and dropped Magnus on his head. Didn't want James Storm. And now Storm setting up another table, but it looks like Storm's going to set this one up on the outside of the ring. James Storm is not thinking victory. Storm is thinking, I want to deliver more punishment. I want to hurt Magnus. I, I think uh, see the referee or him to just want to might want to step back and just let the guys go and just just count when he's needed, man. And again, to what Mike said earlier, that's all that referee Earl Hebner is out here to do. This isn't a, a wrestling match, ladies and gentlemen. This is an unsanctioned fight. Storm not satisfied with just the table. And another bottle from James Storm. And again, none of this is surprising. Earl Hebner not taking anything from James Storm, and all that allowed Magnus to recover. And Storm lost his focus at that point. That may come back to cost him. It may cost him right here. James Storm on the table. James Storm is down. What is Magnus thinking? I don't know, but you can see it in his eyes. Oh, I think we have an idea. Magnus thinking of everything James Storm has done to his family. Wait, look at the distance between Magnus and Storm. And Magnus misses oh. through the table. Magnus may have broken his arm. Or his hip, Josh. Did you see that landing? Is flying through the air, thought he was gonna put away James Storm. Just listen. Uh, I don't know if any of you know what that feels like, but Pope has been thrown over the rope a minute of times. Pope has come off the top turn buckle just like Magnus did. And when there's nothing there, there's no pattern where he landed, and you go into the concrete, hip on first. Magnus has to be hurting right now. I don't know if he's going to be able to continue. Yeah, but Pope, how about the distance? The leap so far at that point just adds even more impact to James the blow. James Storm is going to defeat Magnus here at Slammiversary, and Magnus somehow, someway, kicks out a two. Barely got the arm up, but it's enough to let Look this match table. continue. Look at that table on it's the outside. shattered. And the table on the inside as well. Carnage and wreckage and chaos and bedlam. Well, well, Got here. Oh boy. That smelling salt? Did he get that from underneath the ring? Not disrespect towards you, Mike. James Storm is out, is out of control. Glad he didn't come my way. But God knows what is he about to do with this powder substance he has in his hand right now. And Magnus! Oh. Nice counter! One step ahead of James Storm, and Magnus plants Storm in the center of the ring. Yeah, but Hebner was blinded at the same time. Come on, Earl. Earl's got to turn around. James Storm is down and out. Earl Hebner's trying to recover, trying to get his vision back. Earl was in the middle, and he was blinded. James Storm realizes it. James Storm thinking, thinking last call, and it connects. Magnus turned right into it. 
James Storm is going to steal this victory from Magnus, and Magnus kicks out at two. Whoa, daddy! We got a big one going on right now. Just when you thought it was over, Magnus shows that he got heart. He has fortitude, and he's fighting not just for the win of this match, but for his family, as you pointed out earlier, Josh. Uh-oh. Got the cowbell. Remember when James Storm bounced this off the head of Jeff Hardy back in New York City, trying to use it here on Magnus. Magnus counters. Storm down. Magnus is going to win. Storm down, and Storm picks out. What incredible action tonight. Just from the opening bell all the way to now, the matches are insane. The Slammiversary, 13th year, Josh. Come on, man, pop up. Magnus got caught there. Cowbell right off the skull. Never saw it coming. And then the quick follow-up. Last call and last call again. Two last calls, and James Storm is going to defeat Magnus, who picks out again. <laughs> What will. This is awesome, Mike. We have counted Magnus out of this match repeatedly, time after time. And how is he able to avoid defeat? I think it's because it's what's at stake here. Just how personal this issue is with Storm. James Storm's got to be wondering, what else do I have to do to beat this man here tonight? Storm has a guardrail in the ring, steel chair now, there's busted up tables. It's anarchy rules here at Slammiversary. Now why does he keep looking at you, Josh? Storm is just showing a crazier side than, than normal. And he's like just pissed off right now. James Storm setting up the hardware here. Remember, Magnus just ate two last call super kicks. The cowbell off the off the skull. And the match isn't over yet. Is that impressive or what? Magnus is fighting not only for himself, but for his son, for his fiance, oh. Mickey James. Rock and kick by Storm from outside. I don't know if Magnus knows how much trouble he's in right now. James Storm up top and Magnus plays defense. Magnus looks like he's going to join James Storm up on the top rope. If Magnus can connect here, this match is going to be over. Oh. Just bending up that steel. And once again, Josh, it was Magnus' hip earlier as he went for that, that uh, flying elbow. One more look. One more look at this superplex here by Magnus. The cover, the cover, the cover, and Storm picked out. As I was saying earlier, it was Magnus who landed on his hip. And right there, Magnus kind of repaid the favor to James Storm as he suplexed him and he went hip first into that barricade. Amazing resiliency on the part of both men, Magnus and Storm. We've counted them out repeatedly during this matchup. Look at the Magnus. bump. Did you see the bump in the, the wind yep. on, on the top of the head of Magnus as he came right here to the broadcast table? Did you see Magnus's focus on the bottle? I and believe Storm, Storm has one as well. He does. We just saw the close-up on the monitor. Yeah, but both men have bottles. Oh! Both men down. Storm's got his arm draped over Magnus. Storm's not going to even know it, but he just defeated Magnus at Slammiversary. He fell right into the pin. What? And I'm the Your winner, man. the Cowboy, James Storm! What a lucky landing for James Storm. Could not put it any better. Lucky landing is right. Both made contact with the bottle. And the luck goes to Storm. The fact that he fell on top, drapes the arm, and James Storm gets the win. What an amazing match. What an amazing fight. Whatever you want to call it, just call it like this. They came, they saw, they fought, and they left it all in the middle of that ring. Josh set the table right at the start of this match. He said, do not expect a wrestling match, and it was nowhere close to a wrestling match. What an incredible brawl it was.
guys. The wrong man won. Magnus deserved this victory. Magnus should have beat James Storm. James Storm's actions are despicable. And in this match, Magnus was fighting for his family, and it was carnage, it was chaos. It was all over the place. Boy, we have some ground to cover when it comes to a replay package of this match. That very unique catapult situation turned the tide momentarily. The electricity almost went out inside the impact zone. Got back in the ring. The power bomb. And then oh. the elbow off the top, where Magnus missed but went right through the table. Storm with the powder. But it was a good counter by Magnus, but it would hurt Magnus because referee Earl Hebner was blinded. Magnus should have won the match right here. One, two, three, and the match should have been over. Hebner not able to make the pin. Magnus turns around, gets drilled by the super kick, and when Hebner counts, we thought that was the end of the match, but no. Not so fast. Magnus would hang around, the superplex through the guardrail, and then this. And watch Storm. Like Mike today said, Storm fell on top of Magnus. Lucky fall. That was unsanctioned. That was anything goes. James Storm and Magnus, they left it all in the center of the six-sided ring here at Slammiversary. James Storm's been here since day one, and he defeated Magnus at Slammiversary 2015. What a night here tonight at Slammiversary, but first I want to ask about a match coming up this Wednesday night. It's going to feature my guests at this time, Drew Galloway and the members of the Rising taking on the Beatdown Clan. One final battle to end it all this Wednesday on Impact. There's nothing left to say, JB. We've said it the past few months, we've been at war. The final battle this Wednesday, MVP, your BDC disbands. Drew, I have to ask you, your most high-profile matchup coming up tonight, the main event, the King of the Mountain matchup. You and four other men competing for the King of the Mountain Championship tonight in the main event. This is my first Slammiversary. This is my first TNA pay-per-view. This is my first pay-per-view main event. This is the biggest night in the career of Drew Galloway, and it's for the King of the Mountain Championship. You said it perfect. I couldn't say it any better. It's the best of the best. A unique match. Entertaining carnage. That's what stand-up's all about. It isn't about MVP in the BDC tonight. Tonight is about a kid from a small country getting the opportunity to live his dream. It will not slip through my fingers. And Drew Galloway will be the king of the mountain. All right, it happens tonight in our main event. Drew Galloway competes in the king of the mountain matchup.
Anders from Green Bay, Wisconsin, Mr. Anderson. teaming up with Mr. Anderson here. As we continue to sort out our audio issues, the show will come on, Slammiversary 2015 will continue. We'll do our best to provide commentary. Some people are excited because they don't have to listen to Pope anymore. I mean, what else can we do? It's live TV, right? That's right, the show must go on. You know, the NFL tried games without announcers in the past. Maybe we thought we'd give it a shot here tonight at the anniversary. Well, I, I'm going to go back and say again that Magnus and James Storm, they, they took out something back there in their unsanctioned match, and it caused chaos. Well, we saw the power outage inside the arena. And, and obviously, this is still part of that situation, trying to get our audio back. This Wednesday at Bell to Bell, it is EC3 one on one with Kurt Angle for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. But here tonight at Slam of the it's EC3 and Tyrus against Mr. Anderson and Lashley. Needless to say, Anderson and Lashley do not like EC3. It's your boy, Josh. As I say every week on Impact Wrestling, we know that you are a huge fan of one EC3, but right now, I can assure you, one being Mr. Kennedy and Lashley, they like this guy. Mr. Anderson will start this match out here with EC3. It's not that I'm a fan of EC3, Pope. I think you're using the wrong word. I believe in EC3. I think the EC3 is going to be on, is going to go on to become world champion. I respect EC3. EC3's undefeated streak dates back to October of 2013 at Bound for Glory, his debut. 20 months and counting. And love it or hate it, agree with his methods or not, Josh, you have to respect the streak, right? It'll be 620 days come July 1st, come Wednesday, that EC3 will be unpinned, unsubmitted, undefeated, and a celebration is planned should EC3 do the improbable and defeat Kurt Angle. But well, Josh, what's look for, I, I mean, how do you respect a guy like EC3 who has taken every opportunity to get wins over his opponent with the help of one Tyrus on the outside playing interference on his behalf half of the time? Not to discredit his record. Look, what goes on inside the ring, I, I like that our officials here at Impact Wrestling sort of let the guys go. They let them loose, they call it loose, and what happens outside the ring, thing. If it happens inside the ring, then maybe I'll start to see your side of this, of, of what you say about EC3. You mean like when Tyrus got in the ring on, on behalf of EC3 on the several times that he, he's done it? And that's one of the reasons behind this tag match, because Tyrus, a factor in both of the losses of Anderson and Lashley to EC3. Hence, this is why we this tag team matchup at Slammiversary. Josh is saying by any means necessary, EC3 gets the job done. Good call, Professor Pope has been saying that for quite some time. But I see your point. It was Kurt Angle who handpicked Lashley as the opponent of EC3 a couple of weeks ago. And EC3 was able to defeat Lashley. EC3 was able to defeat Mr. Anderson. This was after Anderson had Tyrus locked in a cage. And right side, Lashley suplex. So powerful is the former world champion. Well, it appeared Lashley was going to look. look. This oh, again. There's the Tyrus factor. There it is. The Mad Dinosaur once again interfering on behalf of his, his guy, EC3. Tyrus will come in off the tag. Legal tag was made. 
Guys, back of the keep in mind, Anderson and Lashley, they have battled in the past on many occasions, but this is the first time that Lashley and Anderson have joined forces as a tag team. First time ever as a team. And now Iris hooks it. And then Lashley kicks out at two. Mike, to your point, Anderson and Lashley, these guys came up together. They were, you guys talked about OVW earlier. They were a part of, of that class in OVW. These guys really, uh, they know each other very well. Yeah, they battled over championships. They battled over the ECW world title, the WWE's version. They battled over the US championship in the past. So they certainly have that history of going head to head. Now we're gonna see how they're able to work together as a team if they work together as a team. There isn't any more two people that are more competitive and intense as Lashley and Mr. Anderson. Pope has been in that class as, as well, you know what I'm saying? And I've battled both of these guys. Every time that I've battled Lashley, I've come out of it with stitches. Look above my eyes right now, I have eight stitches. That's the result of Lashley. Pope, how difficult is it to deal with the size and power of Lashley combined with the background that he has, the amateur wrestling, the MMA as well? Well, obviously, Trying to match his power is not something that anybody in Impact Wrestling wants to do. So I had to stick, much like Anderson is doing right now. Jab, stick, and move. Oh, and down goes EC3. Mr. Anderson all over the number one contender for the world title. Neckbreaker and Anderson looking good right now. Boy, Anderson really feeling it. Slammiversary history for Anderson. This is his sixth Slammiversary match. 2011, Anderson defeated Sting to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship at Slammiversary. Anderson Quick cover. flies into the cover, hooks the leg, and Tyrus either broke it up at two or, in, or uh, EC3 kicked out. I don't know if Tyrus made a trip coming in the ring to make, make that save right there. And look at the strength of Mr. Anderson. Oh. EC3 picked the ankle. Wise move there by EC3. Dude, the landing with all of the weight of Tyrus crashing down onto the head Jump of Anderson. Cover yet again, and Lashley was sensing defeat. He broke it up at two. Tag team match here at Slammiversary on what has been an incredible night. Boom. Anderson drops after that hook punch style shot by Tyrus. And then Tyrus goes across the ring and knocks Lashley off the apron. When do you see something like that? Not a bad move on behalf of the big man. That's something that I would have done myself. are seeing the team of EC3 and Tyrus work together. We brought up at the outset here how this is the first time that Anderson and Lashley have worked together. First time that they teamed up. Opposite side of the ring, familiarity factor between EC3 and Tyrus coming into play, in my opinion, at this point. C3 wear down continues. Anderson tries to get back up to his feet, back up to the vertical base, and immediately shut down by Ethan Carter the third. Smart move to stop Anderson before he began to gain momentum. Because let me tell you something, Pope has been in the ring with Anderson several times. Pope has been right here and has some very long and heated feud with one Mr. Anderson. And when he starts to go in, he starts to rock and reel him. Hey, Daddy. And Anderson firing back. EC3. EC3 needs this match to end quickly. He's got a world championship match on Wednesday. Fortunately for Anderson, able to fall or dive into the corner. That brings Lashley in legal. And there's belly to belly. Released overhead suplex. Right back to the bell again by Lashley. The destroyer unleashing the offense on Ethan Carter the third. Just twisted EC3 as he throws him through the air with those belly to belly back. And Lashley, pure strength, pure power, and Lashley drives EC3 into the canvas, hooks the leg, and Lashley almost beat EC3. The impact of the running power slam looked like it was going to be enough to get Lashley the win. 
Carter kicks out. Lashley gonna take him up to his shoulders. EC3 slips out the back. Nice pick there by Lashley. It was low, and EC3 has Lashley up on his shoulders. EC3 takes out Lashley. Nice TKO there by EC3, showing his tremendous strength, if you will, as he was able to horse up the big man Lashley and drop him with that TKO, Josh. And again, EC3 needs this match to end. EC3 cannot risk injury. Looking for the one percenter here on Lashley. Looking to put away the former world champion. Lashley, stop Buster in the center of the ring. Lashley may defeat EC3. Tyrus says not so fast. Oh! What a shot there by Anderson. And now, now Anderson and Lashley have it together as a team. Pinballing Tyrus back and forth. Right hand from Anderson rocks the big man. Lashley follows up with another strike. It's like King Kong and Mothra got Gazira on the real end of things. But Tyrus is still on his feet. How much more punishment can heavy of EC3 take? And Anderson and Lashley. Double shoulder tackles, and the big man is down. Lashley's calling for something. Is he about to take him up? Is he going to get the big man up? Tyrus goes about four bills. I don't think that can do it. This is going to be tough. And Tyrus shows off his strength. Can you imagine that? What strength? Tyrus takes both men over. And what would you consider oh. men the size of Anderson and Lashley? It's amazing. Tyrus is earning his paycheck here tonight. Look at the fire of Tyrus. He's setting up for the spike. He's going to take out Lashley. With the Asiatic spike. Spear in the center of the bank. EC3 with a boot to the side of the head. One percenter coming, one percenter coming. EC3 connects, and the number one contender is going to pin Lashley. And off goes EC3, bell to bell. Your winners, Tyrus and Ethan Carter the third. On you go, young man, to bell to bell to compete for the TNA World Championship this Wednesday against Kurt Angle. Does EC3 fulfill his destiny Wednesday night? Will it become 621 days unbeaten? Wow, what a scene here tonight at Slammiversary. You saw EC3 hold up that replica chip. Will EC3 hold up the actual world championship this Wednesday at Bell to Bell? Speaking of championships, we got a brand new one. It will be earned here tonight. First time ever, the King of the Mountain Championship. And Josh, for only the ninth time in wrestling history, it's King of the Mountain. It's on deck. Five incredible competitors fighting for that King of the Mountain title. You have a favorite. Well, Pope's going to go with the obvious choice here. I'm going with the guy who originated the match, the founder. When hell froze over and he stepped into the middle of the ring, that's who Pope's going with. I'm talking about the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett. Well, I tell you, if you're looking at the past leading to the future in terms of a track record, well, Jeff Jarrett, he has the experience in this match, experience of three times competing in king of the mountain. Nice. Jeff Jarrett is from Global Force Wrestling. Jeff Jarrett is competing against four impact wrestlers. They're not gonna let him win. Unique situation in this match, and of the five, only Bobby Roode of the other four competitors has ever been in King of the Mountain. We're gonna find out what happens in our main event, but right now we're gonna send things back to the locker room area once again. Our broadcast colleague, Jeremy Borash. Oh, thank you very much, Josh. It certainly has been an amazing night here at Slammiversary. You know, if you'd have told me seven days ago, I would have been standing here with my two guests at this time, I would have told you you were insane. But as it sometimes happens here in the wrestling industry, well, you can expect the unexpected. Jeff, Karen, Jared, please come on in at this time. 
June 19th, 2002, sir, you started this organization. Here we are, 13 years later, you return to Impact Wrestling for the match that you invented, the King of the Mountain match. For four days, four days, the wrestling world's been buzzing. The GFW talent roster has been buzzing. The TNA wrestling locker room has been buzzing. And why? Because they want to know why are the founders of Global Force Wrestling standing in an Impact Wrestling ring? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's all about this moment right here. Slammiversary 13, King of the Mountain match. JB, one last promo. Impact Wrestling fans, Impact Zone fans, a place that I called home for over 10 years. I'm about to take one last walk down the aisle. One last match. And at this stage of my career, if I can pull one out and climb that ladder rung by rung, one last climb and get that belt, oh boy. This relationship is going to go to a whole nother global level. moments away from our main event. From the return of the King of the Mountain match, we'll have the rules in just a second. suspended 15 feet above the ring. It's now time for our main event here at Slammiversary. Oh boy! Here we go, Daddy! And here he comes, accompanied by wife Karen. Yes, it's Jeff Jarrett. He agreed to return to TNA for one final match. 
said, his last time walking the TNA aisle. For real, it was an amazing moment to see Jeff Jarrett appear this past Wednesday night. Hope and I were sitting ringside. I would love to know where you were and what you were thinking when you saw Jeff Jarrett. Well, I was here. I was in Orlando, Florida at the Impact Zone, and I have to tell you, I was as shocked as anybody when I saw Jeff and Karen Jarrett walking to the ring on that live broadcast. Karen Jarrett has full-on queen of the mountain here, and Jeff Jarrett stepping inside the Impact ring. This is truly something that I would never thought I would see in my life that I certainly never thought that I would call in my career. During his TNA tenure, this man, Jeff Jarrett, was a six-time world heavyweight champion. And look how gorgeous Karen looks. She just looks radiant. Let's send things up inside the ring to Jeremy Borash for the official introductions for our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is your Slammiversary main event and is a king of the mountain match. Introducing, first of all, competitor number one, standing to my left from Air Scotland, this is Drew Galloway. Competitor number two. From Nashville, Tennessee, weighing in at 234 pounds, Eric Young. <laughs> Introducing competitor number three. From Cameron, North Carolina, weighing in at 231 pounds, Matt Hardy. Introducing competitor number four. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 235 pounds, he is the It Factor, Bobby Roode. And now, introducing your fifth and final competitor, accompanied to the ring by his wife, Karen. From Hendersonville, Tennessee, weighing in at 231 pounds, he is the founder of Impact Wrestling, the founder of Global Force Wrestling, and the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett. Jeremy Borash has set the stage for the return of King of the Mountain, our main event at Slammiversary. And it features Jeff Jarrett. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Speaks volumes. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Or does it make him more of a mocked man in this match? Guys, I can tell you once the bell rings for King of the Mountain, there's nothing like it in terms of action. You're gonna have to watch all over this impact zone. And again, it's that pin, it's that submission win, because then you become eligible, and at the same time, you take another one of the wrestlers out of play. You put them in that penalty box, in that penalty cage, for two minutes. And narrow down the field. Here we go. Five of the best competing for the King of the Mountain Championship. You know, and I'm sort of digging the rules of King of the Mountain. You're not eligible. You gotta get a pinfall or submission to become eligible. And then it's an opportunity to rep the championship, climb a ladder, hang the championship, and then leave as the new King of the Mountain champion. As they square off here, like Mike said, don't blink. You might miss something spectacular in King of the Mountain. And Jeff Jarrett's left all alone in the ring. I didn't expect this. The veteran, if you will. The and, just judging by the look on his face, Pope didn't need to interrupt you. I'm not sure that he expected it either. Why should he? As, as Josh pointed out earlier, GFW owner here in the middle of the ring and everybody's taking out themselves and not him. The former king of, king of the mountain himself. The deranged Eric Young grabs a ladder first. Jeff Jarrett still has it physically involved in this matchup. And now Bobby Roode, who called Jeff Jarrett his mentor. 
and Jeff says, here we go. Bobby Roode said that Jeff Jarrett believed in him when no one else did, and here they go in our main event. How about Jarrett firing up on Roode? The series of rights and the high elevation with the back body drop. And here comes Derek Young, who said, I don't care that Jeff Jarrett's the king of the mountain. It doesn't affect me one. I'm going to win, and I'm going to leave as king of the mountain champion. We may not have seen Jeff Jarrett in a TNA ring for the past couple years, but you can see he's in great physical condition. He has been wrestling Whoa. on a limited basis. He's wrestled in Mexico, he's wrestled in Japan, and something tells me we're on the verge, and now we are seeing the Jarrett strut. That's classic Jeff Jarrett right there. Who's this trying to become eligible? It's Bobby Roode, and Roode is now eligible. Jeff Jarrett must spend the next two minutes in penalty box. And that's huge for Bobby Roode, especially getting the pin so early in the match, because now for the balance of this match, Bobby Roode is eligible to hang the championship and win King of the Mountain at the same time. Jeff Jarrett's on ice for two minutes. Jeff Jarrett must sit and watch and wait to see if this match will continue. Or can Bobby Roode, there you see the clock in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, of how long Jeff Jarrett must stay in the penalty box. Yeah, Jarrett frozen out of it for the two minutes, and that opens things up for Roode. How smart is this on the part of the in fact? Close lines wrestlers to the outside, opens things up to bring the ladder in. Now he's got the belt from the referee. Oh, but he's got to keep his eyes on Matt Hardy. So now that the championship, the belt is down, back to the official. And again, Bobby Roode is the only one that can legally hang the championship and leave as King of the Mountain champion at this point. As the match progresses, Josh, you're dead on. You're right. Once that belt is dropped, it becomes eligible, but only for the wrestlers that scored the pin or submission. So Roode in that very unique situation of being Side right effect. Alone. Side effect by Matt Hardy. Cover by Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy is that no, close no, to being close, eligible. Though, close. You just gotta know Jeff Jarrett now standing this side of the penalty box is just regret. He was trying to, to, to say, hey, thank you to the fans. They were saying you still got it. He did a struck and it backfired. Bobby Roode, Spinebuster to Drew Galloway. Bobby Roode is in the driver's seat right now in King of the Mountain. By far the most impressive of the five, in my opinion, in the opening minutes of this matchup is Bobby Roode. Far and away. Well, absolutely. He's already got a pinfall for him. Definitely, he's the more impressive. Jeff Jarrett has about 20 seconds to go. And I'm then saying, in box. addition to the pin, I think that Bobby Roode has been the guy that's dominated this match and love the strategy of Bobby Roode. And it's uh, it's going to look as if no one is going to take advantage of the power play and become eligible while Jeff Jarrett was inside the penalty box. I guess maybe not surprising in terms of experience in King of the Mountain, the only other person out of the five besides Jarrett to compete is Bobby Roode. He's been there before. He's comfortable with this situation. And Eric Young quickly goes to attack mode here on Jeff Jarrett. Pope, what does it do when you're in a match, then you're taken out of a match as Eric Young goes for the cover? It's legal on the outside. Jarrett shoulders down, and Jeff Jarrett's going back inside the box for two more minutes. It plays both ways, Josh. You go into the penalty box, obviously your chance of possibly getting the title if you're eligible. Roots el I mean, Roots el and Eric Young is eligible yes. too. Eric Young just became eligible at the expense of Jeff Jarrett, who's going back inside the penalty box, but inside the ring, Eric Young is climbing the ladder. Eric Young hooks the ladder to the hook, and Eric Young leaves as King of the Mountain champion. And Matt Hardy plays defense. I guess it's also not surprising that Matt Hardy, because of his time experience in matches involving a ladder, even though he's not competed specifically in King of the Mountain, you've got to think that stylistically, he's an absolutely perfect fit for this kind of match. Matt Hardy, one of the co-founders of Full Metal Mayhem. Now in the ring with Drew Galloway. Drew Galloway's adrenaline's got to be flowing in his first main event at Slammiversary. Thinking Future Shock DDT onto the ladder. But well, how much of that affected Drew Galloway's 
He went back for to the ladder, sacrificing his own body to get the pin on Matt Hardy. And we have happen? our third eligible wrestler for King of the Mountain. Bobby Roode knows that that doesn't benefit him, so he stops Drew Galloway from picking Matt Hardy. And imagine how frustrated Jarrett must be for the second time, iced out of the situation with still another minute plus before he can get back into this match. Jeff Jarrett has spent more time in the penalty box than in the match. Absolutely, but at the same time, I want to point out, these are five of the top athletes, top premier athletes in TNA. And, and Jeff Jarrett's not in TNA. Jeff Jarrett is the founder of Global Force Wrestling, and in my opinion, Jeff Jarrett cannot win this match. Again, Matt. Uh, excuse me, Josh, I take your point, and you're absolutely right. But these guys are premier athletes. Even Jeff, who has been off for some time, as Mike today pointed out, he still appears to be in great physical shape. And I don't sure think that, that the yeah, match itself right. is just ready to come to an end. So Jeff to the penalty box, but it also gives him a chance to recuperate and reserve his energy. As we try to reset the stage here, Eric Young and Bobby Roode are eligible. They can win this match right now. They're the only two that can. And again, it's Ruth and EY staring off the long-time tag team partners, rivals as well. Ruth and EY, you know, if you take a look at the, the face of Eric Young, check, check his eye, it just shows the physicality of the match. He's got that eye swinging. Jarrett is out of the penalty game. Jeff Jarrett has spent four minutes inside the penalty box, and now Jeff Jarrett is unloading on everybody. Low blow by despicable Eric Young, and there goes Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett down yet again. If the boys were smart, they, they team up and take out Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, but everyone, get, everyone wants to become eligible. And they've only got two guys that are eligible. Absolutely. Take out Jeff, and everybody has a 25% chance of winning. Matt Hardy tries to fade the center of the ring. Eric Young wants to pile drop Drew Galloway. Jackknife cover. Matt Hardy has pinned Bobby Roode. He's qualified. Drew Galloway has pinned Eric Young. Four out of the five are eligible. Drew Galloway. And now we're going to have to have guys in the penalty cage as a result of those pins. I, I take that back. I believe I believe that Eric Young is qualified just yet. I said four out of the five. Eric yes. Young has qualified. Yeah, Eric okay. Young was the second to qualify. It's fast and furious. It's tough to keep, keep up with what's what going on about? as both men are in the penalty box. Three. We can't beat all three. We, we just we oh, just oh, talked about oh, the long oh. history between right, Eric wait, 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 the ring. Look at the shot of the ring. Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway are a ladder away. They're a step away from securing the championship to the hook. And how about Jeff Jarrett sneaking in, taking both men down? But keep in mind, Jarrett is not eligible. The only one of the five. It goes strong. There it is. Hold Jarrett that thought. Jarrett may be eligible play. right now. Jarrett may be eligible right now. Matt Hardy breaks it up. Smart, smart move by Matt Hardy. Preventing the Jarrett pin and at the same time keeping Jarrett ineligible in this match. Jeff Jarrett, Matt Hardy, and Drew Galloway inside the ring. Eric Young and Bobby Roode are locked inside the penalty box. They've got another 50 seconds to go. Jeff Jarrett. To become eligible in the next 45 seconds, right? Well, he needs to become eligible at some point. I don't know about the next 45 seconds. Oh, Hardy gonna try and get the pin here. Nice counter. Stroke it is. Matt and Hardy work. down, and Jeff Hardy, excuse me, Jeff Jarrett was that close to becoming eligible. No problem, I'm not mad at you. The action is crazy right now, but you know what? To your point, Josh, look what's going on. It appears that TNA athletes are keeping the GFW owner from pinning. You might wonder why Matt Hardy went for a pin even though he's already eligible. The upside is he takes Jarrett out yeah. of the match again for two minutes. Great point. Great point as Eric Young and Bobby Roode get back into the ring. Now all five men are in. Four are eligible to become King of the Mountain champion. And look at Bobby Roode and EY had two minutes in the box to get a game plan together, and it appears that they're sticking to it. But for how long? Eric Young 
and Bobby Roode. Shocked to see these two working together in this matchup. They must have had some sort of a huddle inside the penalty box. It sure looked like it, and it sounded like it. The best that we could hear on our, on our audio, the situation that we have. And now Roode sets it up 3-1. He slams Jarrett. There's the top rope elbow drop by Eric Young. Nobody hits it quite like EY. And Eric Young and Bobby Roode. Wow. There it is. Team Canada days. Wow. But is Eric Young, the maniacal Eric Young, someone? Yes, that you want on your and side. Eric is he something that you trust? Eric no, you Young can't trust him. Looking for the pile dropper. Countered by Bobby Roode. I'm shocked that Bobby Roode thought he could trust Eric Young. And out these two go. Wait a minute. Let's call a spade a spade in the club a club, Daddy. Both of these individuals in EY and Eric, uh, Bobby Roode, they had the same thought process. You got to know that. You got one a dirty heel. You got one that's a little insane. They had the same thought. EY just beat him to it. And now it's Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway inside the ring. Jeff Jarrett trying to get back to his speed. The beautiful Karen Jarrett trying to encourage a man. Drew Galloway has Matt Hardy up. Here comes Jeff Jarrett. And Jeff Jarrett takes out everybody. Jarrett slides in. Rude. Rude knee right back. Cover. And Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway are going to spend the next two minutes watching King of the Mountain. Jeff Jarrett, he was right in position to get a pin. But Jeff Jarrett took both men down, took Galloway and Hardy down off the top. But it was Rude and EY who capitalized, not Jarrett. We're down to 33% chances for each of the individuals that's going to remain. Jeff Jarrett, Bobby Rude, EY. Now is Jarrett's opportunity, if there ever was one, to capitalize or try to and get the pinfall. Yeah, well, this is what this is, I was just going to say, how unique is this situation? How interesting is this? Ruth, and we built this place, and the three exchange. Bobby Roode, Eric Young, and Jeff going at it, going toe to toe in the center of the six sided ring. Partnerships, working together in this kind of a match. It can be just for a limited time period, it can't be long term. Action fast and furious. Who will gain the advantage though? Jeff Jarrett takes advantage of Bobby Roode, now goes after Eric Young. The veteran instinct starting to fire on all cylinders for Jeff Jarrett. Jeff has 57 seconds left. He needs to try to get one of the guys out of the ring and, and capitalize. Jeff needs a pinfall if he wants to be eligible to become king of the mountain. Jeff Jarrett still the only one who's getting away eligible. From that Oh. Whoa! Whoa. And Eric Young, he's not one to mess with. Uh-oh. Eric Young is psychotic. And Eric Young has the guitar of Jeff Jarrett. Oh, boy. He's going to try and beat Jeff in his own game. And Double J goes low. Oh, Uncle. Jarrett now, guitar in hand. Oh, oh he's sizing up Bobby Roode. And old daddy. What a sh by Jeff Jarrett, who's looking to become eligible for King of the Mount. And Jeff Jarrett is the fifth man eligible. Anyone can win at this point. All five are five. Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway out of the penalty box. There's the championship now in the hands of Galloway. Galloway took it from the referee, but then put the title down. Wait, and now wait. Matt Hardy had it. Did you see what Jeff Jarrett just... I believe Jeff Jarrett just threw someone in the penalty box because Jeff Jarrett got the pin on Bobby Roode. Roode's got his own minute and 44 seconds. What, Matt Hardy just smacked the side of Drew Galloway's head with that title. I don't know if he got all of it, but he was sure swinging Top for of the him. ladder, guys, top of the ladder. Hardy and Galloway fighting. Jeff Jarrett's got his second ladder. What a match. How do you keep up with this at King of the Mountain? Jarrett calls for the belt, handed in by the official. Everybody's down. And Rude's in the penalty box. 
If Jarrett makes his way up the ladder, he's got a chance to win King of the Mountain. He's on his way. But what happens if he wins? Dude, takes the, take the belt with him. Jeff Jarrett is looking to become the first ever King of the Mountain champion, Eric Young. Not so fast, Pope. Here comes EY. And Eric Young is going to... Eric Young with the power bomb. If Jarrett, they both spill to the outside. EY held on. I think Jeff did as well, which is a smart move because if he went and crashed into that floor, he may have been eliminated from this match. Jarrett setting up on the apron. Was going to... Hit the stroke on E1, but now Eric got the pile driver. Keep in mind that the apron. Oh my oh. God! Instead of the apron, pile driver on top of the ladder. E1 power bomb to jump. Jared on the ladder. Oh my goodness! Bobby Roode's got 18 seconds left. Eric Young just pile drove Jeff Jarrett. One more look. Jarrett looks unconscious to me at this point. I don't see him moving at all. Jeff Jarrett may be out cold. Eric Young looks to be in the driver's seat right now. Matt Hardy showing signs of life. And they're all battling right up oh. the penalty box at this point. Josh, the action is, has just gone so crazy here. And I never heard you say, who do you think is going to come out here? The king of the... Guys, at this guys, point, guys, I, I don't guys, know. Check out Galloway. Drew Galloway. Check out Galloway on top of the penalty cage. Drew Galloway. It's going to take out everybody. On top, uh, from the top of the cage. Drew Galloway took them all out. Bodies laid out all over the arena. Galloway's down. Eric Young is down. Bobby Roode is down. What Matt is Hart is down. And it's because of this. Galloway risking it all, standing up, showing his impact, and taking out everyone involved in King of the Mountain, now other than Jeff Perry. Will it pay off for Galloway? Championship belt, King of the Mountain title is brought into the ring by Galloway. The final step for Galloway is to climb the ladder and hang the belt and become King of the Mountain champion. Drew Galloway is going to do this. Matt Hardy is on the other side of the ring. Hardy looks to me at this point like he's the only one that could deprive, that could stop Galloway from hanging the title and winning. Everyone on their feet in the impact zone is Galloway trying to secure that championship to the hook. Down goes the title. Nobody can win right now. Matt Hardy oh. twists the fate. Matt Hardy with a twist of fate to Galloway from the top of the ladder. I want to get a neck check after that. Good grief. Matt Hardy is looking to become king of the mountain. Again, we talked about the style of Matt Hardy being a perfect fit for king of the mountain. Hardy making his way up the ladder, just inches away from hanging the title. Oh, but Bobby Roode from behind. That defense being put there by Bobby Roode. Puts a stop to Matt Hardy. Firing away at the lower back. And Bobby Roode thinking power bomb on Matt Hardy. Down goes Hardy. Karen Jarrett trying to do everything she can to get her husband Jeff back to his feet. Championships in play. It's in the ring and it's in the grasp. It's in the hands of Roode. This is Roode's opportunity. If he ever had one, he has it right now. Will he capitalize on it? Will he be able to hang the belt? Not if Eric Young has anything to say about it. And Eric Young setting up the second ladder. What is going to happen here? After everything we've witnessed tonight, after everything we've seen in this match, the return of King of the Mountain. And the King of the Mountain title off the side of the head of Bobby Roode. EY never dropped the title. He still has possession of it. He can take it up there and hang it and become the king of the mountain. Yeah, that's exactly what Eric Young is thinking. Jeff Jarrett has somehow, some way made his way back into the ring. Yeah, Jarrett has recovered to the point now where he may cry and he is able to stop Eric Young. Yeah, but the title's down. The title's down. The championship is in the canvas. Uh -oh. oh, from the left, gonna go strong. Jarrett has taken out Eric Young. Jarrett's got the title. All he has to do is climb that ladder. 
Everybody's down! Hook the championship! Oh, keep your eyes on Rude! Rude's trying to make up ground! So's Matt Hardy! Jeff Jarrett's there! Jeff Jarrett's gonna secure the He's championship! Jeff Jarrett oh is the God. king of the mountain! He what? did it! What does this mean? Victory. Jeff Jarrett is the king of the mountain, but I want to know what this means. I want to know what this means for our future. I want to know what this means for the king of the mountain championship. Absolutely. Where do we go from here? Does the title stay here? Does Jeff come defend it? Or does it come up with Jeff Jarrett in GFW? You guys, this is unbelievable. What an incredible four days for Jeff Jarrett. It was just this past Wednesday when Jeff Jarrett was on impact. Yes, hell froze over four days ago. And then, fast forward to today, Sunday at Slammiversary, 13 year anniversary of TNA. Jared said, I'm walking the aisle at TNA for one last time. And Jeff Jarrett, my God, he has done it. The King of the Mountain wins the King of the Mountain Championship. More questions than answers right now. It relates to the future of Impact Wrestling as it relates to what happens next. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us for our 13th year anniversary. We thank you for joining us for Slammiversary. For Mike Today and the Pope, I'm Josh Matthews. We'll see you Wednesday night at Bell to Bell.